So this week I called my mom to tell her that I finally made it. I'm React content. This upload is not my usual format and the quality is a bit below what I normally put out, but I think that the meat of what is going on here matters. It is an edit of my stream VOD from Friday night where I react to a VTuber named Virus reacting to both of my videos in the sexualization and body image series. To be fair, I'm not really reacting as I had watched her videos before going through them and I have edited the video down as much as possible as it's several hours long, but I want to assure you that all the nuts and bolts are there. I wanted to state this beforehand because I have the obvious advantage of Batman prep, whereas most things that Virus says are drawn from the moment. I say it in the VOD but it's worth saying multiple times I think Virus is awesome. If you enjoy the video and the discussion and you like the video then please consider doing the same on her channel for the original video as she is essentially a collaborator here. And yes, I'm balding and I'm not pretty. Deal with it. Tonight is a, it's a, it's a different night. It's a kind of a a special night for me um, because I've become React content. This is Virus um, and she did a React video on my video on sexualization and body image in video games. So we're going to be looking through that tonight. It's a two hour video um, and then there's a follow up video and I want to try and get most of this done tonight um, so I can wrap it up into a YouTube video as well. So say hi to YouTube. Um, but we'll be watching it at 1.25 speed. That's kind of like reasonable. But before we get into that, I need aircon. Don't worry, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not showing you hentai. This is my video, um, that I did. It's, it's almost at half a million views. Um, and I'm really shocked. Um, but yeah, this, uh, VTuber named Virus, she did, uh, react content to it. And, um, we're going to have a look at that. I'm really like, this is kind of like one of the things I wanted from the video is I, I wanted to open discussion and for it to not be this kind of like weird um, thing. Cause I, f I feel like a lot of the times when we talk about uh, sexualization in video games, it becomes like this really standoffish discussion that th the people on this side are bad and the people on this side are bad. And I want it to be open. So I'm, I really, how to say, I admire this VTuber for, for coming out and, and doing this. So we'll have a look and we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, I've actually watched the video, I've watched her video, so I'm not actually reacting, but I do have some thoughts that I want to add to it. Um, man, half a mil, it's, it is insane. And like, it is insane. And I have no idea why, okay, I do know why it, it became popular in hindsight, but like, I didn't plan it. I'm a little bit of an idiot because in my mind, I was like sexualization and body image. That's a fine title that describes what I'm talking about in the video. But the people, but then I used an image of a Nikkei character and people were that loved Nikkei saw the title and they instantly got mad. And then when they, um, when they actually went to watch the video to get mad about it, they were pretty happy. And so I think it's turned out pretty well. Okay, so let's start the video. Uh, whatever happens, whatever she's, whatever virus says, uh, we will be kind. Um, I certainly will be kind. I, I'm actually really grateful that she, she made these videos. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, what I wanted to say is that I actually really like her character model. Um, I'll get to why later, but I don't really watch VTubers, but I, I like this one. Good morning, basement dwellers. Today, I want to watch a video with you guys called Sexualization and Body Image in Video Games by Live Average Gamer. And this piqued my attention because it had Tia on the thumbnail, which probably because of her giant bonkers, but I love said giant bonkers. So I wonder what this is going to be about. But I have views on this as well, which are video games are fiction, it's fucking harmless, and I love big bahongers. <laughs> and okay. I love Tia. I rolled so hard for Tia. <laughs> so, uh, Did she get Tia though? Because I rolled for Tia as well and I didn't get Tia. Uh, let's get into this. I don't know how my volume's gonna be, so... Uh... This was always going to come up at some point and I've always wrestled with how to approach the subject of sexualization in video games because I know I don't have the popular opinion here, like 
I know I'm not going to get an award for saying what I'm about to say. Think deep down, everyone knows it. Boobs are great. I still think- Okay, I agree. <laughs> Okay, that's a good start. And uh, that was a Nikkei character, by the way. I can't remember her name, but she's in, uh, uh, she's in the maid squad. Soda. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. They. They. They are fantastic. I do agree with that. That this is not where I thought this video was going to go. By the way, um, <laughs> I expected this to be another one of those uh, bonkers bad videos. But no, no. Yeah, I. I completely agree with that one. Um, they're they're great. Love it. Back to the first time I saw Guinevere in Dark Souls. I mean, holy moly, praise the suns. This character kind of stands out in Dark Souls and there's a reason for it. During the Design Works interview for Dark Souls, the director, Hidetaki Miyazaki, said this, quote, Talking of glamour, her breasts have nothing to do with me. They happened without my knowledge. It's all the artist's fault. I think I mentioned earlier, but I always seek a certain ref I feel so lame listening to myself. I just wanted to say that. Refinement in all my designs. Really? Yes. But the artist had such a happy look on his face, I didn't have the heart to stop him. I love this! I love this! <laughs> the creator is like, okay, we do not want this. And the artist is like, yes, it is. <laughs> ah. I'm glad she had the same reaction I had when I read it. Yeah, I, 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 get, I get very happy when I draw them as well. Um, I, I relate. <laughs> I, I relate to this one. There's something about the candid nature of Miyazaki's response that makes it seem even more grin-inducing. On the other hand, there are people that don't share this point of view and find these developments disturbing, especially in the context of female characters. Oh, that's code vein, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I don't mean to... Well, I do mean to pause this much, actually. Uh, we are going to be pausing and discussing. Um, <laughs> and sometimes I don't have that much to add. But if you don't want my commentary on it, just watch the original video, which will be linked in the description. Um, so, yeah. I actually highly recommend if you haven't watched the, this, the first video, you should probably watch it because she does skip like large sections of the video, which um, is rude. It's not it's not actually rude, but like I know why she does it, but it's like it misses out big swaths of, of like context. Like the video uh, I, I made it so that everything made sense within the the whole forest of things that I said. Um so like if you don't have the whole forest, it's like the ecosystem fails, if that makes sense. She is kind. Um back referring is good mana, yeah. Yes, she is. She is. A, uh, I actually think um, so. So far, I mean, virus is someone that I would say is up up front. Like as far as we are in here, we are on the same side. Like we basically have exactly the same um, point of view, and um, and she is doing this in, in goodwill. Like I, I don't think that there's anything uh mean spirited about about uh, her intentions or anything like that. I'll admit that when I first saw the thumbnail, I was like uh okay, is this going to be um are we going to be talking about intersectionalism and um uh, you know uh like sociology like first year sociology or something like that. And that's what I was worried about, but it's not that yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this code vein. I, I, I love anime. <laughs> um, I couldn't tell. Um, I feel like the exposure of the female body is um definitely just a thing in media. You know, video games, anime, like everything. Um, honestly, I'm I'm okay with it. <laughs> I don't care, especially when it's something like anime. It's like this is not even realistic. It's literally just this is fan service. Here's fan service, you know. So I'm I'm completely fine with that. Difficult. I mean, she's she's doing it right now, like in her videos. For me to understand, but I'm going to try to do my best to relay what I have heard on the matter. It doesn't have to be Dark Souls. Could be Nikkei, Goddess of Victory, any of the Yay. good Mortal Kombat's Tomb Raider, Bayonetta. I love Nikkei! Yeah, Nikkei goes very, very over the top with that, especially the thighs. <laughs> the thigh sweat is crazy. Like, um, that's, that's like, the thing I remember most from, um, the... There was an event where they were stuck on an island on a beach, and they released a bunch of the girls in bikinis, and the... Th uh, yeah, glowing thighs. 
Have you seen the thighs in Nikkei? It's, okay, for me, the appeal... I, I, I love big bonkers, but that's not even the main appeal for me. <laughs> I, I like thighs. <laughs> I, I'm a sucker for thighs. So, uh, she's an Annie's fan. Uh, I can show you. This is who she's talking about. Every single game does this. But this is something um, that, that we grew up with. I do need with. an excuse. So, I, I don't necessarily receive this as a bad thing. I think when it comes to um, self-image for girls, when you see that kind of thing, it's not as harmful as social media is. I'm just going to be real with you. We can distinguish fiction from reality. It's like we're... Like, at this point, we are so in sync. Like, yes, this is exactly what I'm about to say. But when fiction gets too close to reality, like on social media, when all the girls are completely photoshopped and pretend like it's real, that's when we're getting close to self-image issues. So I don't see a problem with that in, you know, games, stuff like that. I do see some problem with it on social media, for example. Um, but yeah, in games, totally fine. ETA, Red Dead Redemption, and Duke Nukem. Let me know if I missed any. So anyways, my He missed all of them. <laughs> the first being that gamers feel misrepresented yep. by the characters they play as, or even compare themselves to those characters and feel shame for not meeting the standard set by media. I mean, duh, you don't have cat ears. The other is that the current state of gaming is nerd- Yes, actually, why don't we have cat ear? The maximum jail sentence for bestiality in Australia is 14 years. That's why we don't have cat ears. Humans suck. <laughs> we should have cat ears. Turing males, in particular, in the direction of misogyny by holding women to unreasonable standards set on screen and then treating them as objects of sexualization or rewards to be possessed. The third is that they just fail to be immersed in the game because it's plainly unrealistic to them. Now, I'm not perfect and it's not my intent to straw man people, but obviously I'm going to have my bias as any human being does. If you give me a well- Same, same. I'm definitely uh, gonna have a bias considering I'm a hardcore Nikkei player. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have a bias, but I can also talk about this from the perspective of growing up as a girl, playing video games, seeing all of that, you know? That's perfect. That's actually what I want. Um, like, it's fine for me to make a video about it, but if it doesn't go... So there's two objectives. One, I want other people to talk about it um, and for it to not... For the discussion to remain civil. So... Uh, as soon as it, it goes into, basically, like, it, as soon as it becomes a left versus right discussion in, uh, in, in the political sense, or it becomes name-calling, we're wasting our time. The, the second outcome, the second outcome that I do want from this video, uh, from, from my original video, was to encourage, uh, encourage women to step out into making video games, um, like, engaging in solo game development and not for them to stay in solo game development but because solo game development is such a good uh springboard because you learn all of the skills in an in enough like in a you learn enough of each skill to be able to then decide whether this is actually something you want to do because it is really hard work or you can decide what you want to specialize in if you really do like something in it and then you you have kind of like the skills of how to get there like having something under, having something in your portfolio is far more important than having the right education if that makes sense so i can also talk about that part of it um and again i want to reiterate that i don't think this is harmful to the self image of girls Nikkei is a good gacha game. The characters and story are really well done. They are! They are! I love Nikkei. I actually agree with her. So, the thing about Nikkei is that you know it's unrealistic. It is made to be unrealistic. And some might say it's made for the male gaze, but I'm out here saying this is made for the female gaze too. <laughs> uh, women love Nikkei just as much as men, maybe even a little more. So We'll see about that. I think Nikkei is fine. Nikkei is completely okay. And I've actually talked about this a little bit 
on the um, Azure Lane drama. I, I've covered that. And um, I have a video up about that, actually. But a lot of people, especially women, complaining about the massive bohonkers being unrealistic. I'm going to be real. It's boob envy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> They're jealous of the bohonkers. I'm so glad that she said it because it's not something that I can say online. Like, um, it's... It, you guys, you guys know, like, I can't, you can't go up to, um, a bunch, you can't, you can't go up to a woman and then say, oh, um, you just don't like me playing this video game because you're jealous of imaginary characters. Because then it's, uh, you know that you will be attacked for it. She can say it. So that's great. And I don't understand that because it is clearly fictional, but you know, some, some people get a little insecure about it. it. Causes great back pain. Yes. It's kind of irrelevant to the topic. If they were real, it would have. <laughs> However, they are, they are anime waifus. They do not experience. Honestly, I don't know why they envy it. When boobs get too big, they look ugly. E yes. I actually, so like, I mean, we're talking about our own personal tastes. Uh, yeah, like, there's a point where it, it looks ridiculous. Sometimes it looks, um, no, it's, I don't think it's just you. Um, I think that if you surveyed everyone, you would find that there are certain things, certain points of proportion that are in common with most people. Uh, don't be one of those pe those contrarians that are like, oh, but I'm different. Yes, I know you're different because you're a contrarian. But like most people, if we surveyed them, the body types won't be very, very different. And that's because there is a biological side to it. Like it's not like, if you, yes, beauty is in the eye of, be of the beholder. I'm, I'm actually going to be doing a video on this soon. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But our eyes are kind of similar. Uh, there, like, there's certain, like, there's, there are, there are rules for how art works, and once you know those rules, you can break them. But the rules wouldn't exist if there weren't things in common that we all had. And one of those things is like there is a female physique that is, uh, that is kind of generally more attractive to the majority of, of guys and vice versa. Like, it's the same for a woman the other way around. That's why we have things like heroic proportions. It's back pain. <laughs> you also have to remember that we don't have the time to dive into the nuance of every perspective within the bucket of for and against in every scenario. For example, some of you might be fine with Bayonetta because her sexuality is rationalized in a way that makes sense to you, but maybe you find the scantily clad Katana from Mortal Kombat 9 so unreasonably proportioned and clothed that the only possible reasoning is that men find it hot. I mean, it doesn't exactly take a soothsayer to put that one together, but we'll get to that. I first. Excuse me. You're excused. Why are we just talking about men again? Because I'm a man. I like women, hello? Yeah, okay, so like, yes, you are a woman, and you are entitled to whatever you, you want to believe. Like, I think people attack the, the things that I don't say in the video. Um, let, I'll let her talk for a bit, and then I'll, I'll address it. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no issue with um, female characters being dressed like that, having proportions like that. And there, okay, this is also a big difference. When you see a real woman who's very attractive, mm -hmm. is rude to stare. However, when you see a fictional woman who's very attractive, you can stare all you want. Big difference. Big difference. I just want to tackle physical representation, and I think that this one is generally expressed more so by females, and yeah, I kind of feel the same. I, as a male, struggle to relate to most male video game characters. Most guys that are gamers struggle with this as well. They just. I regret saying that so much. I, I, I needed to say it a different way. So talk about it. This is going to take a while, but let me cook. I'm doing something here. This is me in my 20s. And then it's I did many photo. years of gym. And finally, I did my first fitness competition in 2018. This is me then. I don't look like this at the moment. The reality is that maintaining a low body fat physique is really hard work, especially if you're trying to hold on to your- Okay, first of all, congratulations. That takes a lot of effort. Thank you. A lot of effort. It did. About five years. <laughs> Second, I don't think- Everyone needs to feel represented in the game they're playing. This is why I regret saying it like that. 
I don't know how this is for men because obviously a I'm a woman. Fantastic photo. <laughs> but as a woman, I don't need to feel represented. In fact, <laughs> when I played World of Warcraft as a teenager, I was constantly staring at my female character's butt. <laughs> She didn't need to be a representation of me. She just needed to be eye candy for the countless hours I spent playing. I don't know. I don't know how, how it is for anyone else. <laughs> I notice I like games with a female protag option. Makes it feel like I'm the character. Yes, I, I do like um, female protagonists. And not just to stare at their butts. <laughs> Mostly to stare at their butts. But <laughs> this video is going to be demonetized again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine to have games that don't have representation. What do you guys think, like, versus if you can choose to be a male character or a female character in a video game, do you tend to choose the the sex you are or the sex you aren't? Because I almost always play a female character, but it's completely, it's for a completely different reason to virus here. Like, her reasoning was, as far as what she told me, was that she liked, um, like, they might, she might have another reason that she didn't say, but, like, um, that she wanted something good to look at while she was playing the game, which might actually just tell you that World of Warcraft is just a boring MMO. But, for me, I actually tend to make the same female character in every video game if I have the option to, at a subconscious level. Uh, so, like, if I don't actively think, no, I'm not going to make that character, I have a default template. And I think, for me, it's more of a case of, like, I'm already a guy, and this is a chance for me to roleplay as something else. But it's still my perspective controlling everything. I don't know, people are complicated. And it's fine to have games that do. Mm, yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's important to have representation, but I don't think it's important to have representation in literally everything, if you know what I mean. For example, I grew up playing The Legend of Zelda. Do I feel represented in that game in any way? No. Does I think the representation needs to be... Uh... How the representation is governed is is important, I think. Um, but I do generally agree that that people people want to be represented in video games to some degree. Does it matter? No, it's a good game. Uh, usually, it's contextual for me. Like in Dishonored, I'm more attached to Corvo, the male option. Uh, well, isn't Corvo the only option in the first game? See, the reason why I didn't I didn't play The Witcher is I don't want to be Geralt of Rivia. I wanted to be one of the female characters. Uh, and that's extremely petty. But that's it. It's a video game. Like, that's what I want to do. Um, but in a lot of other games, Dark Souls or Monster Hunter, I do what you do. Yeah, okay. We are complicated. I find it easier to enjoy stories when the character is male than female. Yeah, see, there you go. I'd say that lupus is actually more within the within the norm, but I don't have any stats for that. Um, I don't have any stats for that other than Asmongold said so. He's the only option in the first game. Because I think if I played the first game and then I go to the second game, I'd be more likely to choose Corvo because I have rapport with him. If that makes sense. Like, I know his character. I have an attachment to his character. It's one of the reasons why I didn't play The Last of Us Part Two. is... Um, when I found out that I wasn't playing as Jake, it's like, well, I don't want to play the game. I, I mean, Joel, Joel. When I found out that I wasn't going to be playing as Joel, I didn't want to play the game anymore because I liked playing with Joel. I liked that character a lot. I liked the story he had and I wanted to see it continue. Game, what do you mean? The entire franchise is good. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you know? So, I, I like representation but i also think it's fine to play games that don't have that so games that i just play for because they're fun because i like the game link is pretty <laughs> he is he is link is pretty uh, not the point right now <laughs> yeah i i think i started playing oh god i played my first legend of zelda game when i was four um at that time my favorite thing in the world was sailor moon by the way <laughs>
don't really need to be represented. My wife's favorite、um, anime growing up was Sailor Moon. My wife's favorite cartoon. In a game, I never really identify as the MC. I just play for fun and enjoy the story. Yeah, 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 and that's okay too. I think everyone should be able to play games the way they want to play games. You know, because in the end, games exist to have fun with it. So I don't think anyone should be telling anyone how to play the game they want to play. Is is the main thing. Your muscle mass, and you aren't using steroids. Now, even if I did jump on gear, there isn't any guarantee that I would blow up. I mean, I'd get bigger, and my jawline would widen. But the thing that most people don't know about steroids is exactly how prevalent it is, and it's not just bodybuilding. I still talk to people that didn't know that Arnold Schwarzenegger was openly on gear, and everyone competing in Mr. Olympia when he was competing was also on gear. In reality, if you look like you belong on stage and you're very close to 90 kilograms as a man in the world of bodybuilding, then I have my doubts. <laughs> a lot of them are purpose. She skipped quite a bit there. Obviously, trying to keep these things under wraps for obvious reasons. It's a topic that is surrounded by a lot of taboo and nonsense that gets in the way of clear consensus. And this was before I knew <laughs> that I was pansexual. <laughs> Four-year-old. Is that so? I knew that she's pansexual, but like, um, there you go. She's pansexual. Uh, anyone not know what that means? I'll tell you anyways. Um, it means that she is attract. To um, their sex or, or or gender identity doesn't matter to them. She's attracted to all of them, or can be. Me had a massive crush on Sailor Jupiter. <laughs> I guess kind of related to that, <laughs> because、uh, me liking women、uh, has a influence on the way I view today's topic. Yes,、What's、it does.、Mean? Uh, uh, pansexual、oh. <laughs> is basically I, I can be attracted、it. to anyone regardless of gender or sex. I'm just attracted to certain humans, basically. But I do love the big bahongas. Don't don't get that mixed up. I I do love the bahongas. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, that was a that was a side tangent. I didn't need to go on. Now, what makes this even more sinister is that our current day and age makes it very easy to take advantage of people that don't know this. There are tons of influencers and movie stars that have been on gear and then claim that they aren't, or even worse, they are selling fitness programs while claiming that their physique is obtainable. And yeah, a better physique is obtainable, but maybe not that particular one. Liv, where are you going with this? Okay, I'm getting there. The point is that the collective majority opinion on what a peak natural male looks like is unrealistic. It's just not on the cards for a lot of men, not without drugs. Now, you could make reasonable arguments that more people are. In the gym now, so there's a greater genetic pool in the sport, and therefore more impressive physique. There's another time jump there. We say that sports science has improved to make bodybuilding more efficient, and this is true. Something to consider, but I don't think it's astronomically. I got so much shit for playing Honkai Star Rail at the normal game speed. It's like people were like, "I can't believe you're not playing it at、um, two times speed. Like it's so slow." It's like, but. I, I kind of feel like, doesn't that say a lot about what the game is like that you want to skip it? I saw that I was so confused. Yeah, so everyone play. Apparently, everyone plays. Okay, not apparently. Most people play Honkai Star Rail at two times speed so that they can grind stuff really fast. But because I play at a, a at a casual pace, like I just open the game when I want to play it. Like I don't, I don't care what banners are up. Like I'll just pull at whatever banners there are. But. When I get get to it, like I'm not severely attached to the game, so I don't get annoyed by trivial things. But、um, yeah, people didn't like that. Different. Okay, so basically, to、uh, sum this all up,、um, <laughs> men feel just as underrepresented as women do. Not quite. Men don't care as much about it.、Um, or, or、uh, I think a better way to say it is that. People that are against sexualization, so I'm including men and women in this, and、um, any orientation you might want. Those people that are there are people, there are people in general that don't feel represented in video games because that the 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 shapes are so wildly different from theirs. Is 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 the point of this? Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. A lot of attractive men in video games aren't necessarily realistic. Don't men in general, despite not being realistic,、uh, the most used protagonists? Yes, they are. However, however, this is an、uh, this is a- most yeah. So like, if you're going to count them, 
there are more male protagonists in video games than um, females, although that gap is closing over time. I don't think it's really important, uh, personally. Like, I don't think it, it matters, especially when there are so many more games where you can choose to be either um, either sex. It doesn't... Though, like, that is increasing as well. Um, so, I, I don't think it... Like, does anyone go to sleep? Yeah, re-re-re-reacting, exactly. Does anyone go to sleep at night and think... It's just not fair. It's just not fair that then uh, there's 15 more male characters in video games than female ones. This is a fun fact for you. In MMOs, a lot of men like to use female characters. That's not a secret. Um, I, I was, we were just talking about that. Um, trust me, my pillow is drenched in sweat out of the stressing about my male overrepresentation. <laughs> it needs to be fixed. Um, I mean, there are games that I'm like, this could be more impactful if it were a minority, but no, I don't lose sleep. Yeah. I'm certainly, I'm certain that there, there are times where you would like it to be one way or another, right? But it's not like... I don't think it's the most important thing for most people, but people make it the most important thing, which is why I'm, I kind of made the video. You know, the, um, that's probably why I like protagonists in full armor, including helmet, because it doesn't matter if they are ugly or handsome. You're just a badass man of metal. Yeah, it's kind of what um, all the Souls games are, right? Like your ugliest sin once you die. You're all hollowed out. And the only thing that's cool about it is that you're wearing Ornstein's hel um, armor. So yeah. A lot of women like to use female characters too, and there's a lot of women who like to use male characters. And I think that circles back to the fact that you stare at your character all day, every day when you play an MMO. I think it's more complicated than that, um, generally, but that, that is a good reason. So the character you play better be... Like, what I mean is it can be the reason for some people, uh, but, or maybe even the majority, but like it doesn't, it doesn't cover everyone. Attractive. But yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a little MMO fun fact for you. Not wrong, as a guy, I mainly play female characters. Exactly. We need to talk about something else as well. The average body fat percentage of an optimal athlete is around 14% in males. Generally speaking, your abs start to really show at around 12%. But high-level bodybuilding requires single-digit figures, around 4% at the most professional level. As a guy, I don't really mind exaggerated male characters having tree trunks as arms and necks. If I'm going to take on hordes of enemies or some demon end boss, I better be playing some gods. Fair. Fair. So hard to maintain single digit body fat? Yes. True. Yeah. Uh, I, I would imagine that is difficult. Um, personally, I'm not there. You have no idea. Here's what people don't tell you, is you start food guarding. Do you do you guys know what you what I mean by that? So like, you'll be preparing food and my wife would come into the kitchen and I would get mad. Like, I, I didn't. I obviously didn't lash out at my wife. Like, I love my wife. Um, but like, I would feel anger, and I'd actually have to calm myself down and be like, "She's not coming to take my food. It's fine." Um, because it's it is like a um, your body. You are resisting your body's will to. Your body wants to reach an equilibrium, and you are forcing it out of that equilibrium and it is trying to force its way back very fit i play video games <laughs> you know and um my occupation is main i wonder she's probably going to say what she does for her occupation at a desk but i can imagine that is super hard Here's a side by side of Soldier 76 next to Frank Zane, three time Mr. Olympia. And yes, he was on gear, but he's also considered the father of aesthetics. My point here is that the point of reference for many artists when they go to pencil out these peak male physiques starts beyond what is naturally achievable for most men, especially men that are not spending substantial time pursuing these physiques. Now, for full disclosure, you can definitely find male characters that fit more realistic ideals. Ethan Winters from Resident Evil and Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series come to mind, but all these guys are classically handsome, and I'ma tell you something. You can change your mass. What is the face you got? And I ain't got that face. Also, a lot of games that try to appeal to more east. Yeah, that is the thing. Especially when it comes to artists, we like drawing things. Why does it look like you're balding, Liv? Shut up! <laughs> you actually look like you're bolder than last time. Um, probably because I am. Oh, I don't mean it, Boomer. You can tell me I'm balding if you like. I've had this- now you made me conscious about my balding. 
things that are unrealistic. That's that's just it. When you draw muscle, you draw muscle. <laughs> and it, it's fun to draw things that are unrealistic. Agreed. When you're going through that process, you're not thinking of, oh, is this something that's humanly achievable? No, you're thinking, does this look pleasing to the eyes? And that's the thing, you know, that's that's the thing. Humans like things they find visually pleasing and there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly, exactly. We, we all want to look at things that are pleasing to the eyes. Western standards don't really value muscularity as much as Western cultures, but rather slim, tall figures with more of a focus on aspects like face symmetry, eye size, and fair skin. The takeaway is that there are tons of male video game characters that don't even have naturally or unnaturally achievable physiques. Most of them are nowhere near the average male, and what's scary is that the general population are largely incompetent in- The- <laughs> I'm just looking at the- Chris Redfield's neck is about to swallow his face. In discerning this, whether it be from the perspective of a male or a female. In fact, there is no study on this. Literally, no one talks about it. For the sake of fairness, what I'm talking about here is applicable to women as well. For example, women retain a high... Maybe 30? Yeah. I mean, you it's really hard to tell. Like, people... I'll, I'll give you an example. Um... My... My thighs... Are... Like, so this is something I, I, I didn't know. So normally when you measure fat, right, um, you, you pinch the, you pinch the skin with calipers and they measure the, they measure basically how much fat you have there. Basically, whatever you can pinch in there, that's fat. Very little of that is skin. If you could actually grab your skin, you'll find it's actually quite, uh, thin. If, if you have low body fat percentage. But my thighs are actually really difficult to, to grab and, and pinch. And so I actually do have quite a bit of fat on my thighs, but it doesn't really show very easily. And like, you would think that I have quite, um, not muscular legs, because I don't have big legs. It's, it's a genetic weakness of mine. But um, you would think that I don't have as much fat as I actually do on my thighs. My legs are way stronger than they should be. Uh, most women have an affinity towards leg strength. And it's also something that they tend to focus on more. Like, uh, well, it, it's just something you, you naturally use more as well. Things like squatting down, bending at the knees, those are all things that would, would uh, focus on your legs. Whereas if you're not picking up a lot of things, your arms will lag behind. I wonder how many people watching just pinch themselves? Yeah, I'd love to say that. But women generally have their abs show at a higher body fat percentage. Here is an example of a bikini pro. What's important to note is one, her physique is very impressive. I believe she's a natural athlete, but there are no guarantees. Wait, we only got one? We <laughs> no, there's two. You just paused the video before I said it. <laughs> he made it sound like he was gonna list things off there, but uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree with point number one and uh, the only point he made. It is very impressive. Uh, that's the thing. Like, I, I think people who can, like, work out and stick with it are very impressive, even if you don't look like that. If you can, like, work out and really stick with that, that is already super impressive. Yeah, I agree with this. Uh, like, long-term commitment is something that people can look up to. Like, if you... um, I'll, So, when I was uh, doing the bodybuilding stuff, just coming in with, with prepped lunches every day, after a while, people asked me how I was doing it because I guess they would also they also wanted to have healthy uh, meals, but and, and like have a way forward. But they wanted they I guess they were impressed with my ability to keep doing it for so long. Meanwhile, the reason is is that my ex left me and told me that I was weak, and therefore I went to gym to prove that she was wrong. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, one is all we need. True, that 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 is completely true. I I thought there was more to it, but you know I'm I'm okay with one. But yeah, um, this is completely true so far. Um, women in video games are just as unrealistic as men in video games for for the most part. You know, this this is all true so far. But does it matter? Is the real question here? Does it actually matter that they're unrealistic? I would say no, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> I would say it's more than an opinion, because I agree. 
the thing is, part of the reason we make super unrealistic standards is because people in real life who are fit and healthy show an admirable amount of dedication in, to staying healthy. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's attractive on a. Um, it's an, it's, people like being around people that are successful at something because they feel like they can learn from them. Like, uh, if you want to do well in school, you'll probably try and find someone that is smarter than you or someone that pushes you um, academically and then you'll you'll try and stay with them because they make you better. It's it's like that with a lot of things, I think. That That is a hard line for me. And that is also what gives me the perspective that the lack of realism in games, like, it doesn't matter. That My perspective on that comes from the fact that I have such a hard line between fiction and reality. What I can tell you is that one thing is real. Boobs are mostly fat, and you need to lose fat to show definition. You don't get to choose where fat comes off of your body. All this to say that if you drop body fat for definition as a woman, your boobs are going to diminish substantially. Compare this to Miss Olympia winner Maureen Blanquisco, who appears to have not lost any mass in the ordeal. It does require a level of plastic surgery. I'm gonna come out and say it. Unless you have godly genetics. Even, like, at that level, your genetics don't mean anything. Um, I mean, like, I'm willing to be proven wrong on that. I just, I've, I've never seen it. Um, and I think if there was one, they, they would have been... I, I feel like I would have known if there was one, but uh, perhaps. If anyone has information on this, like, I, I, I would love to know. Like, if you can name an example. One of the comments on my original video was, like, oh, actually, there are women like this, but... They didn't name any of them um, when I asked them, which is usually how I defeat most comments. It's like, just ask them for the data and then they can't produce it. It will require plastic surgery and there's nothing wrong with plastic surgery. Something that women won't talk about um, with breast implants, sometimes because of embarrassment and sometimes because it's personal to them. Like they have their, there's multiple reasons, but um, breast implant, surgery can actually cause chronic long-term effects. So, um, I don't know what it's called, but they basically get chronic sickness from the implants because your body fights them. Um, it's not, not everyone gets that, but um, I can think of an example. Courtney King was a bikini pro that had her implants removed to combat that. If you look up her Instagram, you'll be able to check out that story. Um, but yeah, super underreported. Like, uh, uh, I don't think people are, I think people are more honest about getting the implants. Like you can tell, you can find people that are doing video logs on getting implants, but you won't find as many people talking about them being removed because they spend a lot of money. It's embarrassing. It, it, like I would, I would, I would feel embarrassed if I spend a lot of money on something and then it ended up being to my own health detriment and it's like i basically damaged myself for um vanity reasons or something or, or at least that's how you would you might feel like you'll be perceived um or you know you're sick you don't want to post this kind of stuff on social media so like yeah you're not going to see a lot of information on it Honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think you should live the way you want to live, honestly. If that's what you want, then that's what you should do. Um, sort of. I would, but I don't have the money for it. Like, if you want to jump off a cliff, I would hope that the people in your life would try and stop you. But yeah, I'm being a contrarian. Unfortunately, genetics have cursed me with a flat chest. <laughs> Even though I'm not toned at all, like, my genetics are just like, nope, you're gonna be flat for your entire life. So, if I had the money, I probably would. Hey, Ash, can I say something? Absolutely. But honestly. I mean, flat is fine. It's not my preference, though, I guess. I guess. I understand this. Um, I have poor calf genetics. I wish I had big calves. Uh, grass is always greener on the other side. Oh! Uh, no, I think she's being, I think she's being fairly honest. I mean, she's, she literally just said that she's flat chested and that she doesn't like that about herself. Um, I think she goes into this a, a little bit more, 
later on. Um, like, I, I, I get it. She doesn't want to be seen. Uh, I, I show my face because I want people to, like, there's a part of me that's like, maybe I shouldn't show my face because people will just focus on how I look and then they'll make fun of me and it's like, oh, why would I take this guy seriously? He looks ugly or whatever. But, or he's balding. <clears throat> and I guess... Yes, like, so, like, showing your true face, uh, I, I do think it has an advantage for if you want to be taken seriously. But I do think she's being fairly honest about um, who she is. Like, she is talking about herself. But again, her character isn't flat-chested. Yeah, because she doesn't like that she's flat-chested. Not saying it's right or wrong. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but you don't get to say, sure, this dude says this about woman, but I'm woman. I also missed a portion. Okay, okay, sure, sure. I do get what you mean. I get what you mean. Um, I think if someone made fun of my um, my looks and I don't know what they look like, what they look like, I'm sort of like, okay, that's your insecurity. Like, show me a photo of yourself and then we'll talk. Guess I, I actually married a woman that I didn't know what she looked like. Um, a a as in, like, um, when we first met, we met online dating. She didn't have a profile photo. I was actually going to reject her. I was going to reject her, but she sent me like this really long paragraph, like four or five paragraphs about how dogs are royal. I think she meant loyal, but she said royal. And I needed to know why she said royal. And that's how we started talking. Dogs are royal, dude. Yeah, well, she yeah, so... I mean, that's how we started talking, and then and then from there on, um, you know, we ended up, uh, like, this led to that, and then we got married. But it's, like, for, so, like, yes, I almost rejected her simply because she didn't put out what, um, like, I felt like she was probably hiding something. Most people that don't have a profile photo are um, hiding something, and I didn't want to go through the, the rigmarole of finding out what it was and or, or I didn't want to ask her hey can you show me a photo of you because I just think it's common decency to to do that if you're you're doing online dating but um I'm glad I talked to her this is what I'm getting at or let me let me say it this way I'm saying that there is um well let's just watch the video my thighs are massive like full disclosure here my thighs are absolutely massive uh, I don't have anything in the chest department though <laughs> Um, which, I guess, can be attractive to some people, but for me, I would prefer to have some bonkers, you know? But yeah, plastic surgery, very expensive. Nothing against it, though. It is. The thighs make up for the chest. <laughs> they do it. That's why Australian women like to take trips to Thailand. Indeed. Um, they, they, they do indeed make up for the chest. <laughs> anyway. For those that can't do simple addition, breast implants are extremely prominent and sought after. And like steroids, by the way, a lot of bikini pros do use performance enhancers, but we're not getting into that now. But like steroids, it's more than you think. I mean, I sort of feel like people know in the back of their minds, they just prefer not to address it since, you know, it's harder to hide and they like it. Society approves. Anyways, if you're a female, you can pick one. Boobs or definition. And if that's not a- Yay, we get Annie's. Nikkei, yay. She likes Nikkei. Yeah, um, Nikkei body types, for the most part, uh, very unrealistic, but we enjoy it. And that's the thing, though, there's nothing realistic. About and trans girls like to go to Thailand for trans-related surgeries. Yeah, there you go. Or wait, um, either for wait times and or price. Yeah, both of those things. But Nikkei, nothing. Not even the story. <laughs> I, in defense of Nikkei. In defense of... Oh, shit. All right. In defense. Bear with me here. Where is she? Where is she? Um... Okay. Okay. So, you can see that this character here... In a lot of video games, she would have really big boobs. But then she would have, like, abs. At least in Nikkei, the body fat levels actually seem kind of consistent. So, like, I'm not saying- I'm not trying to make the argument that this is a realistic person or an achievable thing. 
I'm just saying, like, it's not... It's not totally... Uh... Left, like, it's not totally deranged. It's, um... Like, at least the body fat percentages are consistent with, 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 with the boob sizes. That's what I'm saying. Like, you can see that the back of her thighs, she's got a lot of fat. Anyways, a lot of you probably didn't want to see that. Those aren't realistic. Yeah, of course they're not. I just want to say, I'm just trying to say that the, the fat levels supporting that are not crazy. In comparison, like, um, I can give you an example. Look up Mortal Kombat 9 and you're going to see girls with, like, ripped abs and um, big boobs as well. Where, like, those those things in contrast are actually less realistic. Yeah, um, Nikkei body types, for the most part, uh, very unrealistic, but we enjoy it. And that's the thing, though, there's nothing realistic about Nikkei. Nothing. Not even the story. <laughs> We're we're set in a sci-fi dystopia, and these girls aren't even real. Even in the story, these girls aren't real. They're all robots. Their bodies are all robotic. That is even true. in the story, they're not real. <laughs> so that's also something you must consider. The game absolutely puts a focus on the girls not being realistic. The only real thing in Nikkei are the emotions you feel. <laughs> true, true. Oh god. I cried so hard on the story. I cried playing that game as well. Um, Dorothy's story in particular. I think it was the last stream I did before I went to China. Um, but yeah, I'll admit it. Like, it... <sighs> Aside from the facade of it being, it, like, it is, like, it's it's both, right? It's, it is eye candy for your wallet. But at the same time, the story is really good and they do a really good job. I, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll do a, lo a much longer video on that at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the girls, um, their bodies are robotic. Um, they, they have, like, human brains inside of them. But their bodies are all robotic, like, they're not real. Even in this game universe, these bodies are not real. You know? So, in the case of Nikkei, it is super obvious that this is not meant to be realistic. I do think they do that on purpose so that they can use... Um, it's, a, it's a convenient... So, like, it's a convenient plot device, but it is also convenient for making Gacho... Um, you can have very sexual gacha characters and then say, oh, but these aren't real women. To satisfy the people that are very, like, this is misogyny type of thing. Um, so Azorlane does it by having all the girls in their gacha be, uh. be battleships. Like, all the, all the girls are actually battleships. So they're not real girls, so they're not underage. They're not um, being sexualized. They're battleships. In the same way, Nikkei, they're robots. What's up, baby? Do you think her virtual arm gets tired of holding the mic up? <laughs> Virus, if you're watching this, does your virtual arm get tired of holding the mug? Please let us know. My chat wants to know. Because we just enjoy the jiggle. <laughs> we, we just enjoy the jiggle in Nikkei, you know? The wind-up girls, I haven't. If, if you want to play a game for its realism, do not play Nikkei. <laughs> if you want to play a game for its excellent story and jiggle physics play Nikkei Agreed. also now is a good time I'm sorry I'm shilling but now is a good time to get into Nikkei I'm not even being paid to say this um I just really like Nikkei <laughs> um but now is a good time to get into the game because the first anniversary event is going on and you get all sorts of things from the first anniversary event plus a highly addictive mini game that I have been playing all day yesterday um so yeah what she's talking about is um, there's a, it's a, it's a vampire survivors. It li there's literally vampire survivors in the game, and it's really well done. Um, I agree with her. It is actually a really good time if you're interested in that thing. But obviously, I think if you're in my chat and you aren't playing it already, um, then you're not you're not going to be interested in it. Female video game characters seem to have it all without any of the compromises. And by the way, Zarya and Junker Queen are on gear. Sorry, not sorry. Women don't produce enough testosterone to get that big without help. Yada 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 no. She skipped the part where I said that Abby is on roids. 
I like it's not really a precious thing, but I said it because I knew it would rile people up, and it did. One cares with women that lift are kind of gross. This is also Maureen Black Crisco, by the way. I think a lot of people make snap judgments about. Wait, who said women who lift are gross? Wait. Don't pretend that there aren't women that say that. There are so many women that, like, my wife included, doesn't want to go to gym because she's worried about getting muscle on her arms. There are so many women. Don't don't pretend like it's it's not a thing. There are a lot of women that that really do believe that if they work out, they'll become jacked, and that they'll be unattractive to men, and then, um, or they won't be elegant anymore. I'm not afraid of getting big because I know I cannot. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing is that it's it's an education problem. Guys have this problem too. Guys think that they'll um like I, I didn't start doing gym until I was 30 because I really thought that I was just stuck being skinny because that's my genetics. I didn't even know that you like I didn't really believe that you could gain on and and um that you could even gain muscle. I thought like, oh, I'm an endomorph. Like this is my body type and therefore I am stuck like this. And like, yes, I have a genetic predisposition to being skinny, but it doesn't mean that you can't work within the, the limits of, of your genetics. Like you can, you can change things within the limits of your genetics. Bodybuilding is not the same as being strong strictly. They're related, but they're not the same, but they're not technically... 100% the same thing. What? I love muscle mommies. What do you mean? <laughs> Sorry, my preference is coming uh, to the forefront again. I think one of the most harmful perceptions that females have adopted for themselves is that the pursuit of becoming physically stronger will make them unattractive. I cannot find a single scenario where it hasn't made a female more attractive and more capable outside of the use of performance enhancing drugs. Like I said, these extremes are unsustainable, but it ties nicely into wrapping up this detour. Real life is full of bodies that are not sustainable or even achievable for the average person, male or female. Video games and other mediums take these unachievable shapes even further from our reach. But I do think that there is a fundamental difference between how different people see this. I kind of see it as the space between perfection and reality. Two lines that you can influence and draw close, but you never can align. My thought- Don't take her pickle. True, but also, I will never have to- <laughs> No matter how hard I might work on it. When it comes to video games and, like, unrealistic bodies, yeah, I mean, we, we all know that is out of our reach. That is 100% out of our reach. It is nice to have some inspiration to work towards, but, you know, keep your expectations contained on that front. I, I think when it comes to real life, and I have said this in the beginning of this stream, video games, the unrealism in video games isn't nearly as harmful to your self-image as social media is. Because when it comes to social media, it blurs the line between fiction and reality. Even though in our the back of our heads, we know like it's Photoshop, they've had enhancements, you know, it still blurs, blurs the line too much between what is fiction and what is reality. I actually agree with this. I think a lot of people have this problem. But what happens, like we're in an, we're in an era now where you can make AI girlfriends. So it's even worse now. So like how long until we're playing video games with AI girlfriends where you can't actually tell the difference anymore? So like as much as you, she might feel like they are distinctly different, that line could cross at some point. Um, I, I, I posit, I, 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 I put forward that it's probably something that people need education on. Uh, like the fact that people are even comparing themselves to, or, or, or so magnetically pulled to social media and comparing themselves on social media is a fundamental problem. Not that, so it shouldn't matter how good the bait is, you shouldn't be going for it. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like swimming in the dark and wondering why you're getting attacked by sharks. We should be teaching people not to swim in the dark. That's that's my point of view. Honestly, I can't take someone seriously who's discussing how social media adjusts your expectations, but she's literally on social media blurring the lines. Yeah.
Well, I mean, she she is clearly fictional. I think she is consistent with herself. I totally agree with you, but again, she's not helping the situation. Yeah, the VTuber parasocial relationship stuff is a major issue. I think that Instagram and shit is a a lot worse, though. It It is. Uh, let's not pretend like we don't do it ourselves. I mean, everyone knows what the, their best side is when you take a photo. Everyone knows that you don't stand face on when you, you take a photo with the camera. So, like, to a degree, everyone participates in putting forward their best self. So we should actually be teaching people to recognize that that is what they do. Because when it comes to video games, you can look at it and you're like, that's not real life, you know? I have a dimple on one side. I only show that. Yeah. This is a game. This is fiction. When it comes to social media, they are real people, but they aren't necessarily realistic. I think yeah, she's not wrong to be inspired not and just do nothing with it. Like, I can play God of War 3 and not go to the gym afterwards. I don't need to be Kratos Light. But it's nice to dream for a moment. Now, on the other hand, maybe you're in the camp that sees these characters and people as these impossible standards that you need to meet to be approved of by society. And my first question is this. Who told you that? You want to know my second question? People got so mad that I said that. Um, because... I know that no one explicitly tells people, hey, you should compare yourself to a video game character. My point of saying it was to prompt introspection so that people would think, actually, who has told me that? It's, a, it's supposed to be a wake-up call, but people took it very literally. Why did you listen to them? What scares me the most is that there are some that carry this perspective like a backpack of bricks, and they want everyone else to stop and fill their backpacks with bricks too. And if you're wondering why people, and I mean people very deliberately here, male, female, whatever, if you're wondering why people won't take on your perspective, it's because it's harmful to them. You're the one that is peddling a dangerous ideal. Video okay, question for chat. Would you only find someone attractive? If they looked as unrealistic as a video game character, would you find someone with those unrealistic uh, body proportions attractive? Or would you find someone who looks like a normal human? If you gave the guys an option, they will take a girlfriend with cat ears over a real girl any day of the week. If they look like an anime character. Uh, not everyone, but you know, <laughs> you know, like, like they wouldn't spend six hundred dollars on their girlfriend, but they spend six hundred dollars on a character that literally does nothing in real life. Attractive as well, because I have my thoughts on this, but I w I would like to hear from you guys. I would. I can promise you, women do not feel that way. The mistake was attempting to prompt introspection to people that refuse to look inward at all. Yeah, true. I do not want a video game, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's fair. I think that, like, I shouldn't actually speak for for everyone. Like, I know that Lupus would not agree with me, for example, but cat ear ladies are pretty popular. Bunny ear ladies, too. Like, it's a thing. It is a thing. Don't mind looks, personality more important? Video game characters are not an accurate reflection of us. Not in the physical sense. Not by a long shot. Instead, they are far more a reflection of an ideal of beauty meant to please, entertain, and provoke inspiration. They have never been a finish line to cross. You're not supposed to get to the point that you look like Lara Croft and then think to yourself, ah, oh, yes, I can finally be loved and accepted. But, and there is a but, female character. <laughs> I'm glad that William's got her. Ass. Th that is, in fact, an SSR jiggle. Okay, anyway, uh, before all of this, what did I ask you guys? Um, so, personally, and I'm going to give you my opinion on this, while I am attracted to the unrealistic bodies, I am also attracted, equally attracted, to real bodies. It's just not the same thing, I guess, is what I'm getting at. Yeah, one of them you can actually touch and interact with um, in a reciprocal way that actually matters. Can I say that? Am I going to get in trouble for saying that? I need another Red Bull. Okay, we're back. It, it is not the same thing for me. And yes, personality matters first and foremost, because you, you don't want to live with someone you don't get along with.
and there is a but, female characters are more often sexualized than male characters. So I can't understand that if you're a female, maybe you don't feel comfortable with Kasumi's massive knockers knocking around on screen in skin tight revealing clothing. You don't see the art. It's not pleasing. In fact, maybe it's just kind of gross to you, which again is difficult for me to grasp, but I'm trying here. You might also feel like female silhouettes aren't as varied as male silhouettes in video games, and I'd say that I broadly agree with that assessment. But if you'd ask me if it's more socially acceptable to alter the appearance of men for comedic value, I'd also agree. So we find our ourselves at an impasse here. Majority wise, males like sexualization of female video game characters a lot. Not always, and not in every scenario, but we like it a lot. I'm not going to lie. Females don't tend to like it as much, but sometimes they do. Let's Um, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Female here. I get where you're coming from. You feel like, um, she feels like I I'm not recognizing her as a female, but for for starters, the video isn't really aimed at her because she is already- we are already in agreement. I'm talking to my opposition. And that opposition is true. Like, uh, I have friends that aren't allowed to play female game- uh, video game characters because their wives don't want them to. Because they're jealous of them. I think. That's- that's my guess. Um, so, like, it's a real thing. Um, uh, I don't think just if, if you feel like I'm punching at ghosts, then I, I don't think you've scrolled through the comment field of, of my video. Literally, I, I read through them. There's 5,000 comments there. People do think like that. Women don't like being called females. Uh, I had this comment a lot on YouTube and I'm not going to change it. Um, when I'm reading the studies, like, if you look up the words female and male, they're benign words. They don't actually mean anything derogatory. When I'm reading the studies, they use the terms males and females, so when I'm talking about the research, I use males and females to be in line with that. It's just a consistency thing. I use males as much as females. That It doesn't mean anything intrinsically. Also, if you refer to a male as a man, they ref and then refer to a woman as a female, that's different. How so? Don't like being called females? All of them? Because I'll I'll tell you why why I I don't I I I I'll push back on that. Because for the first two weeks, and also this girl too, like she's also a woman. She doesn't mention it at all. She does mention other things about what I say. Um, like she definitely will disagree with me at some point, but she doesn't mention that thing. And also for the first two weeks, while the, while this video was going through the YouTube algorithm and it was reaching the normal demographic, no one said a word about it. But once it started going over to other demographics outside of, of its normal sphere, then people started picking up on it and, and complaining about it. So I don't think it's a unanimous thing. I don't I don't agree with that. My my wife doesn't agree with that either. If I'm talking to a, a specific person and they ask me not to say that to them about them and I'm talking about that specific person, I will honor that 100%. Isn't it a lot more of a connotation of the type of people who say females or rather Oh yeah, so people want to link me to Andrew Tate. That's basically it. But, it, like, I'm not Andrew Tate. Unless you give me a Bugatti, don't make that reference. Like, you need to give me a Bugatti before you say things like that. Whether people call her lady girl or woman or female. Is you're placing them as a human? If you call a woman a female, you're calling her a female? A female what? Oh, it's a female human. It's, a, it's inferred. I like, I think we should... I think you can recognize that we have a rapport, right? Like, I don't, I don't think of, 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 of woman in a derogatory way. So like you're taking the word and you're saying that it's derogatory and you're attaching that to my thoughts. Like I think that, but I don't think that, you know, I don't think that. And the word doesn't mean that if we Google it right now, it doesn't mean that it, so don't call a male a man, which is meant to be a male human, but a woman a female who's meant to be a woman? I use male and female. In the military, it was a derogatory term. What's my color Bugatti though? I don't know. 
What color was this Bugatti? Um, they would read a man's uniform and call him, say, Smith. But me, they'd call me female. Yeah, but I'm not that person. And I'm not using it in that way. I'm not even from your country. I don't think you should be holding me to standards and things that people say in your country. It doesn't mean that. It might mean that to you, but like it's not It's not that in the dictionary. It's not that in my country. It matters in mo more in places like the US? M maybe. I like booty. <laughs> I like the bohongas. Hello? <laughs> I want to say I see the point from... A straight woman's perspective, but I really don't. <laughs> I think even straight women can appreciate the female form. I don't see how you cannot. Babe? Hey, babe. My wife just got home from work. Do you like boobs? I just don't understand being straight. This is a tangent that this I did not work. mean to go on. Um, <laughs> But I, I generally... Don't understand being straight. Because in my brain, it's like anyone can be attractive. Like, it doesn't matter what gender or sex you are. Like, anyone can be attractive. What does gender or sex have to do with that? <laughs> you, know? you know? So I don't... Un it, it does have a lot to do with it for straight people. Like, it just is. Understand being straight, I guess. Um, my extremely biased perspective here. To address the elephant in the room, are most video games marketed towards males? Yes. Even though the most current survey I can find in 2023 showed 46% of gamers in the US are female, I'd say at a glance that most games cater to male tastes. When I say that though, I don't mean it in the exclusive sense. Okay. I see where he's coming from. However, I also need to mention that I think women tend to be more open about how much they appreciate the female form. I think it's easier for, for women to say that. Because I'll let her talk. Because there's cook. not going to be any backlash, you know? If a man says it, you know, he, he might get a little bit of, of backlash on that. Um, because people start feeling insecure. But if, if a woman says it, there's generally not any backlash for that. So I... I think women typically tend to be more open about that. Also, I just want to, um, as a side note, insert that uh, the person in charge of Nikkei's design... Before she gets into that, I actually um, agree with this. And this is going to come back a bit later. Like, um, I'll give you an example. Uh, if I stream Nikkei, one of my concerns is that is what will people... Like, will I be treated as a pervert for it? Because I'm I'm an I'm an older guy, um, so like, will I be treated as a pervert for for looking at that stuff? Um, can people make that distinction, or do they literally think I'm about to masturbate? Uh, I I I'd, I'd sell you that a lot of these guys like they might have a girlfriend. They're not going to show their girlfriend that they play this game because it's too hard. It's too difficult to to like explain like no no babe i don't want to have sex with the anime character i love you but it's it can be really difficult and guys will also gate well, not gatekeep um guys will also keep other guys in line about it like sometimes when i'll play nikkei someone will be like oh my goodness he's doing this thing again like because also like they might be watching the stream at work they can't be afford to be seen with that on their screen because people will judge them differently for it. Now, I do think that it does also happen to women, to a degree. But I think that she is right in the sense that if a, she can she she can play Nikkei fairly freely, and no one will think that she is um, inwardly dirty for it. You're hitting the nail right on the head right now. Yeah, I saw a lot of talk about this in the comments in the video, self-included. As long as your camera doesn't show down there and you don't make any sexual sounds, why not? Yeah. I mean, like, and, and there are people that are, are fine with it, but, like, you do run the risk of, of, of having that. Like I said, people have wives that, that will not tolerate um, that because they, they... I guess it's because... 
we're taught that men are are very simple. Like we're ve- we're very we are visual in in a lot of ways. I, again, I want to just reiterate. We're shallow and deep at the same like everyone is shallow and deep at the same time. Um we're contradictory and wonderful in that way. But we are taught that guys are visual and you know, they see sex, they can't control themselves, off they go. You know, it's also used, like, guys use it as an excuse for why they cheat as well, and it's sort of like, I don't buy that. That's garbage. I mean, I and I can totally see that. <laughs> I, I can totally see that. Because for me, it feels like Nikkei is catered to me, to someone like me, you know? I, I, I feel like... I think it's the other way around. Nikkei exists and you like it. Nikkei isn't just catered to men. It is also catered to women who appreciate women. Yeah, okay, that's fair. For example, Call of Duty generally appeals more to males, but if you take a look on Twitch, you're going to see that there are tons of females playing the game. Anyways, a bit of lore here. During the 80s, video games moved from the electronic section of stores to the toy section, and because toys were separated into male and female, video game consoles were placed in the boy section. This is one theory behind the gender skew in marketing. Furthermore, only 3% of people working in video games were female in the 80s. Nikkei is just catered to people who are attracted to Nikkei. Um, we'll get into the demographics soon. I personally worked in the video game industry in 2007 as a quality assurance tester for Oren Developments, the guys that made the RTS Dark Rain. Yeah, I know, you don't remember. My experience was that the video game industry is not highly paid and extreme. So many people thought that I worked on Dark Rain, but I only used Dark Rain as an example because that's the most famous game they made. The game I worked on was Fury, and it was... We'll see it in the next video. Extremely volatile, and yeah, I know a QA tester is kind of bottom of the barrel, but I also know what the programmers right. were earning, and it wasn't great. I still. So when we get to the topic of women working in the gaming industry, I think that's a whole different beast to tackle, because the gaming industry has been so male centric for so long. It's hard for women to get into that space and not face sexism, harassment, stuff like that. I do agree with this on a statistical level. Um, so, like, it definitely does exist. Uh, I think a lot of people in the comments claimed that I didn't say that. I actually do say it in the video. It definitely exists. I just didn't spend a lot of time saying it, which is what they wanted, I think, is that they wanted me to say it for a really so okay so crazy thing this this is a crazy thing that i noticed about people in the comments they attributed the amount of time i talked about something to be the weight of how heavy that thing was so if i say that there is there is sexism in video games um i actually use the word sexism not misogyny because it does actually there both exist. Um, but if I say the sexism in video games and it's that it like that's the sentence. And then I um, talk about something else, people will say that I that I said that sexism isn't important. I was like, no, that's not what I mean by that. Like I just I stated it as a fact, like it's there. Um, but if I, I'll, there'll be another example later on where I, it takes a long time to explain something, but it's just a small percentage that I'm talking about. People blow up and they think that I think that it's this really big portion. It just takes a long time to explain some things. That's all. All right. You guys share your snacks. We're going to continue. And I think that's the main thing that keeps women away from those spaces. And it's really sad, but you see it a lot. It it doesn't just happen. Is it the main thing keeping women away from those spaces? That's a very difficult question. Uh, because when I was researching for this video, I couldn't find hard evidence. I can find a lot of... Um, so I can find a lot of feminist articles that imply it. So they'll say things like, there aren't as many women in... STEM research, right? Um, like in the in the eighties, it kind of peaked and then it, it fell off. And they posit that it's because 
men are are bullying women out of STEM, and this could also this could very much be true. Um, and they say like, oh, these things have happened, but there isn't a scientific research on it that I can find. Now, like, I'm not a heartless person here. I'm not like I I literally just said that it happens. I just don't know if it's the main reason. And wasting time. Feminist is almost a dirty word right now, to be honest. Can I share? I so like, um. I think if we're looking at at, at at feminist in the term of its original meaning, as in like um, because fem, I, I think feminism was correct me if I'm wrong, but feminism was born out of a desire for equal rights. I believe in that. So in that sense, I am a feminist. I think it's a stupid name because it's it it doesn't have a long term uh it's a bad name because even if you it, it requires a certain level of research and intellectual um, backing to understand that it's not just make women better uh, so like if, if the if the aim is to have equal rights for everyone I agree with this like I am on board with this can I share my experience in pharmacy sure I work with almost exclusively women exclusively most pharmacists I know are in fact women. That's a doctor. Feminist was meant to be equality. Yeah, exactly. It isn't anymore, though, in my opinion. Yes, so that's where I um, I sort of hop off. So technically, am I a feminist? I don't like the name feminist, but yes, I am. But I think there's second and third wave. I think we're up to... There's waves. There's waves. There are actual waves. And um, there's three of them. And... I don't agree with the waves. Just agree with the core principle. Is a hijackable label anymore, and that's why it's not anymore? Yeah, it is. But they couldn't call it equality because it used to. They used that terminology already. Oh, okay, yeah. But you see, that's that's what I mean. Is it the name requires you to have this historical context to understand? But like, talk to the average Joe walking down the street and ask them if they're a feminist and they're like, no, nah, I'm a man. Do you see what I mean? Like it, you're, it sounds like you're telling people to, to, to go against their own sex. That's why it's a bad name, um, for what it actually stands for. In my opinion, I'm not saying like Joe, average Joe isn't smart. It's kind of his fault for not looking into it, but it is what it is. And these are people that vote. So, like, deal with it. I mean, to be completely fair, women literally couldn't have a credit card until the 70s. Yeah. Yeah, and I support that. I think women should be able to have credit cards. Like, this, I don't think anyone really disagrees with this in our day and age. Cue the clip of Ozzy Osbourne saying that we should bring that restriction back. Give me my credit. I mean, in some ways, I don't have a credit card. Um, so, like, if I was a woman, I would never have felt oppressed because I've never used one. I've never needed one. Happen in like one company. It, it happens quite a lot. I think there are, there are some companies that are um, very open to female employees in that space. Um, I think Bioware is a good example of a company that treats women respectfully. Yeah, but all of their games are dead. So it's not a great example. <laughs> um, no, it, it might be a great example. I'd, I'd actually take, um, like, I would, I'd say that culture is pretty important in the workplace. I'm actually in a workplace where our department within where we work is actually really known for having a really good workplace culture. So I do value that. But there there are a lot of companies, exactly, like Blizzard. There, there are a lot of companies that still don't really accept women. Those are the big companies that have lawsuits currently. So, I, and I actually agree with her, but I just, devil's advocate, how many actual, like, out of the 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 entire landscape of video game devs that exist 
how many of them have those lawsuits happening? Like as a percentage, I wonder. It could it, it statistically it should be a lot because in a in the very general sense when they do surveys about sexual harassment they tend to organize it into generic like entertainment industry or media industry and media industry is high so it should be a lot of them but if I count the ones I know it's Blizzard Riot Ubisoft and yes they're the big one they they are big ones. But it, there are 9,000 people in Riot. Not all 9,000 people are involved. It's just a high-profile case. So I wonder, like, in the small ones that do exist, does it matter? For example, in the one that I was involved with, there weren't any, um, there weren't any cases while I was working there. Although I wasn't working there very long. In their space. Oh, uh, it's whoops. Okay, got you. So... I think that's why it is so skewed towards a like male um how do you say this like why there are more men in the gaming industry than women because women like video games just as much as men do let's be real They're there's a study about this um men are actually more prone to video game addiction and that's because our ro- our dopamine rewards are more triggered by territory control. Um, we can maybe look at the study a bit later. But basically, when they tested them, men are rewarded on a fundamental chemical level. Um, and that's why they're more prone to video game addiction. So, do men like, do women really like them as much? I don't know. There's an almost. I think men are just more likely to be addicts. Yeah, 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 exactly. There's never too late. It was 50% player base of women now. We'll come back to that because I used a stat that was very generous to women. There's a better study that it's not 46%. Hello there. Hey, sweet devil. Thank you so much for the, the follow. I appreciate it. Actually, this might be a good time to talk about... Um, Nikkei, be- because uh, Virus did say that oh, a lot of there are a lot of women playing Nikkei now. I think that it's very much a a female space as well, a, a woman's domain. So there aren't a lot of stats, but uh, we we'll probably look at this one first. Japan counts for sixty percent of the total revenue. So Japan is Kauri, okay? Um, this is her main game, so this, this is why we're using this one. Followed by the US at 15%. So if she's in the US, um, I think she's in Europe because she, she refers to pounds later, but even if she was in the US, she would only be 15% of the revenue. This will become important later. Um, and then... Out of that 60% that are Japanese, right? If we include everyone, if we include everyone all together, there's a 7 to 3 ratio. So for every 7 guys, there are 3 girls, which is actually, like, it's pretty good. But it's nowhere near 50%. Um, If we look at this graph, it's off of Reddit, so I don't know if we can trust it. But it looks like it's a, it looks like it's, um, it's from somewhere official. But let's 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 imagine it's real. Let's imagine that it's because this is the best data I can find. This is the sixty percent. This is for Japan. This is the men. That's the woman. So virus comes from this perspective that there are a lot of women. I think she actually touches on this earlier, but she doesn't put the two together. She says that women are more free to to like play Nikkei and 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 enjoy the, the the sexuality of it. That's why you see it feels like there's a lot of them playing it because they can be open about it. Guys playing the game, it's like this. It's like hidden away. We we're not telling you about it. And most of them are Japanese dudes. 
<laughs> it's it's not even from like the you might feel like it's for you but it's for guys in japan particularly guys in their 30s um they're the ones that are paying for the game they are you are um you are enjoying the game off of their money which is fine that's good like it's nice like isn't it nice to have someone pay for you i like that but that is the reality of it if that's true if that graph is true i think that the other study is probably more reliable but it's still like a seven to three ratio and it's 60 percent of it's from japan it's not even your country and that has increased over the years yeah it, it used to not be as much it has increased i agree with this but anyone who grew up with video games um like for me, for example, I think nowadays, because my generation grew up with video games, we tend to be in like in those spaces more, right? So I, I think that contributes to it as well. My sister grew up with video games, but she doesn't like playing video games as much as we do. So like we had a, a video game console in our house. Anyone was free to play them, um, but she didn't choose to play them. In fact, she preferred having her room painted pink and having more pets. That's what she enjoyed more so than playing video games. It's not from a lack of inviting her. Now that she's older, she actually messaged me the other week and she was like, come play Fortnite with me. How do you thank the bus driver? I'm like, I don't know. I don't play Fortnite. But, <laughs> but she's getting, she's more into them now now that her her daughter is is graduating school than she was when she was a teenager and it's got nothing to do with um my family's socialization i know that's anecdotal but people can grow up around video games and not actually engage with it is what is my point let's be real guys would come over to like my friends would come over to my house and they'd be like Bro, you know your sister's hot, right? Like, get out of my house. I don't want to hear that. What's wrong with you? My sister had a boyfriend in grade 5. I didn't have a girlfriend until I was 25. She had other things that she could do, if you get my drift. Like, she, she had a social life. She had guys come around to visit her. Um, she, like she was not a lady of the night by by any m means, but like she had a social life and she hung out with her friends. Those were things that she wanted to do. Well, um, it, it used to be a male centric space mostly. However, it is almost a fifty fifty now. V two being first stat. Hold on. Okay, what percentage of World of Warcraft players are female? The survey was fifty eight point five three male thirty six percent female 3.33 trans 1.82 other okay it, it's not far off of 50 percent. she's not too wrong vtubing has shown light of how much women play games it's not just vtubing um when i was a teenager i played so much world of warcraft and there were more women playing world of warcraft than you would imagine the problem is that back in those days you'd usually stay quiet if you were female, <laughs> because of the harassment you'd face if you ever turn your mic on. And I have experienced that myself. The sheer amount of harassment just for being female and playing a game that men think women aren't playing for some reason. Because World of Warcraft, I'm pretty sure it was getting close to that 50. It looks like she's going to dip her chin into the coffee and I'm so scared for her. 50 already back in the day. Uh, I mean, just look at the split in Genshin community or Gacha in general. Exactly, yeah. Gacha games are a very good example of women being very much into it. <laughs> Genshin is probably your, like, I'll steel man this argument. Um, Genshin is actually the highest one. And that's probably the best argument. Nikkei is a terrible argument. Um, just looking at the stats that we've, we, we've digged up. But Genshin is actually 46% female. <laughs> yeah, I I would bet, I would bet that that's a good example of the 50-50 split. <laughs> uh, 
uh, Valorant and A servers are so many creeps. I can imagine, especially in first person shooters, it is still very, very prevalent. Not just first person shooters. It's any game that has um, competitive stakes. So, like, you throw in League of Legends as well. Um, she will expose this later, but I think she has a prejudice against first person shooters in particular. As I, I just notice it because you'll see why. In a, you'll see why. Uh, WoW is a toxic game in general. Even when the game launched, there was a lot of griefing and insulting going around there. Yes. And I need you to understand that I learned English in WoW, <laughs> which might explain my excessive amount of swearing at times. Um, I was one of those toxic kids. I'm not going to deny that. I, I, I... Oh, she's English second language. I, I think that's what she's saying. That's Her English is really good. Like, I can tell she has an accent, but like, I don't... I wouldn't have guessed that she was English second language. We're moving on. I was a very toxic kid when I got into WoW. It was bad, but you know, everyone grows up. And the thing is, I think in especially MMOs, women are being more accepted because of the amount of women who actually play MMOs. Like they were always there. They just didn't have the courage to turn their mics on, <laughs> you know? Um, it, it's become more normalized for, for women to be in the MMO space now. I think, yeah, yeah. Uh, first person shooters are still very toxic. Um, I, I think that will take a little bit more time to be normalized. No, they won't be. Um, they will always be aggressive because it's, it's MMOs, you can play them like single player games. You can mess around, you can go fishing and you can do other stuff like that. In the first person shooters that are competitive, you are fighting over an objective and you are in an opposition of wills and when you are losing your skill rating because some idiot on your team isn't playing right it makes you mad they will always even if even if every first person shooter was all woman like like there were there were no men in the lobby it would still become toxic like I don't even like using the word toxic. It would still become competitive and people would get nasty. But yeah. Um, be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. I'm sorry, that was a side tangent again. I will continue. <laughs> The truth is that video games weren't born as this extremely lucrative endeavor. Sure, the industry is huge now, and I'd hope that the value of workers has gone up. But my point is that many people that got into careers in video games back in the day were passionate people that were largely going against the norm of the time. It was never cool to be into video games. There are even records of some game devs leaving their names off of the credits of their games as to not affect their day job. Hideo Kojima told his friends he worked in finance when he started working at Konami. It was often met with disapproval from family and friends and seen as frivolous. The view would change over time, but my point is that it wasn't a desirable career for anyone that didn't really want it. Am I saying that women wouldn't have what it takes to work in video games back in the day? No, but I think that there was a high level of risk, male or female, and I think even as a guy, I'm not confident that I would want to take up a high risk, low paying career for personal fulfillment if I had other options or if I could find that personal fulfillment somewhere else. I'm not using this as a catch all for why females didn't really engage with the video game industry. I just wanted to illustrate the mindset of the time and give it a frame. I think it's pretty common to look at the numbers on the page and say, oh, women aren't doing this thing as much as men. That's bad. Maybe it could have been better. Maybe it should have been better. But while we're balancing out genders in every career, we should probably help out sewage disposal. As you can see, gaming is doing way better than the sewage sector, with 24% of developers being female in 2019 in comparison to only 4.5 of sewage disposal. Well, okay, yeah. Um, who would want to work in sewage? <laughs> I, I could never. Um, yes, you could. You could. And that is true. Uh, when it comes to a lot of um, labor-intensive jobs, I would say, uh, there there is a large percentage um, that's male. And, you know, it's mostly because, I guess... There is a physical difference between men and women when it comes to like natural strength. There is, but I think you are selling. I think she's selling. Um, I think she's selling men. I think she's selling her own sex short. Like I actually think that there are plenty of women that are capable of doing the job. They might not do it as efficiently as someone, a guy that's physically fit. Maybe, maybe. But like, I think they are capable of fulfilling the role. Got to represent manual labor. Sewage disposal bit. Let's go. 
So I think physically demanding jobs um, are actually just harder for women. Uh, yes, but like I don't know if she's taken to into ex account how, like, how heavy are the things that that are being lifted? How fast do you need do you really need to do them? Is it that you are just standing on your feet and doing things physically? Or is it that um, they actually require you to be someone that can move like 80 kilos of weight, for example, right? Um, I don't know if she's thought about these things. I, I actually think it's well within... Well, I know it's well within because there are um, women apprentices. Obviously, there are women doing it as well. I don't think it's necessarily hard, but more of a matter of willingness, I guess, how to say that right. On a scientific level, it is easier for guys, but it, it doesn't mean that... I don't think that that's, an, that's a good excuse. So I'll give you another example. Should women be able to join the army? I think everyone agrees that women should be allowed to join the army, right? But it is also a physically demanding job. That's that's the um that's a, a a bias against surge disposal. By the way, I looked it up. Surge disposal is a well paying job. Like if I quit today and I went and did surge disposal, I wouldn't lose money. Like I would be at the same salary I am now. And also we don't want to work in sewage. Like what the hell? You know? This is this is just me. That's just me. Wait, I wanna go back to that. Because it's important. This is, this, is, this is just me. What the hell? Harder for women. And also, we don't want to work in sewage. Like, what the hell? Does she think that men want to work in sewage? I think that that's a little bit... And I, I'm going to come after her for this because later on she accuses me of having misogynistic thoughts. But um, I don't... What makes you think that men want to do sewerage? They don't want to do sewerage. They want money to keep their families going. That's what they want. Sewerage is actually a necessary thing for society to function. Like, you can't actually have civilization without sewerage works. So it's just far more important than being a video game developer. I don't think it's fair to be able to, like, pick and choose which jobs are important to, 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 um, for, for your sex to be represented in. Does that make, like, does that make sense? Like, it should be, if you're going to go for this arbitrary 50-50, percent which i disagree with i don't think like i think we're actually in agreement that it doesn't need to be 50 50 but like if we're going to go for that then it should be across the board fair is fair right um men don't want to do surge like that's a and I don't think that it's fair to say that because we're more capable at it that we should do it so i'll give you a very personal example when I started doing gym and people started noticing, um, especially women, when they started noticing that I was getting fitter, they asked me to move furniture more. My workplace asked me to move furniture more. And people would say things to me like, oh, well, you've got muscles, so like you, like you, you, you should use them, right? That's not why I go to gym. That's a complete mischaracterization of, of, of my, my interests or, or my will or my, my hopes. You're just using me. And you feel entitled to use me. Because I'm capable. Nobody wants to work in sewerage, but they're just chasing the bag. <laughs> uh, no, well, I mean, like, it, if you have a family and, like, a lot of guys have families. They need to put food on the table. Like that's that's it. That's that's what's available to them. Um, you know, they were looking for work. Their kid will go hungry, and so like, search disposal is not not a bad job in, in terms of pay. But like, you you want to support your family. That's it. Like a lot of people do jobs that they don't like.
Uh, yeah, but yeah, uh, just to, to go back on point, I think being able to choose the field that you work in is a luxury and not everyone gets that luxury. Um, I think that believing that you deserve that luxury is also like, it's nice. It, it would be really nice if, if whatever you wanted to be, you could be, but it's just not how reality um, pans out. You know, this is, this, this is just me. That's just me. Disposal workers being female in 2023. Moving on, the next question is, why is it that only 24% of game developers are female? Why isn't it closer to 50% like the stat for gamers? Well, I think it's because they don't want to be. A lot of people online would like to assert that we have nurtured women away from video games, that the hobby has been gatekept by males, and that careers have been... Well, part of that is true. Part of that is true. But, again... I think the main problem when it comes to getting into that sector you need to consider is the extremely uh, negative consequences for being that in that space just for being a woman. <laughs> That's why some women go to adult stuff on the internet. What are the extremely negative consequences? Because I get this in the comments a lot, but no one actually gives me... Um... Like, I, like, I'm not denying it. I'm asking for a study or an example. Because people say that there are negative consequences, but they don't name them. Okay, well, that's a whole different discussion. And the main reason for that is because uh, men are willing to pay for it. I guess there are some jobs that are more advantageous for women and there are jobs that are more advantageous for men. And I don't think we need the 50-50 split in everything. We agree. We agree. I think it's okay. I think it's okay for some things to be more adv advantageous for men and some things to be more advantageous for women. However, when harassment comes into the picture and being bullied out of a workspace, that is a problem. Yes, we'll cover this in the next video, but... um. Anytime there is a sex-dominated field, there's harassment. So women will harass men, and men will harass women if it's in, within the fields of dom of their dominant field. And people filter into their dominated fields. So it's like, I agree. We should try and remove those things, but I don't have a... I don't have a great solution for the problem. I don't think anyone else does either. Uh, like people will say some really high-minded things, or they'll they'll talk about how bad the problem is, or they'll talk about how, um, or they'll they'll give really lazy things like men should kill themselves, men should um, get out of the space. Um, we just put more women into the field and then the problem will go away. But these are all like ham fisted and like who's 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 doing like who organizes this? Who orchestrates all of this? Are you asking the government to do this? Um, are you going to burn down the buildings and and um, rebuild them in your image? Like how is how does it work? I think that's what fundamentally what people in the comments don't grasp is I'm trying to come to a solution that is amicable and doesn't like, uh, I mean, you follow some of the lines of thoughts in the comment. It's like, so you really want to just kill men, right? Like, or you really just want, um, to just to like strip down the entire industry and then rebuild it in a completely different way. I don't think it's practical. I do think there has the way that women and men harass each other too is super different and it's pretty hard to think of any uniform remedy either way. Yeah. The matrix <laughs> can't be harassment if everybody in the workplace are replaced with robots. Easy. Yeah. Hey, that could be do it. Like McDonald's in the US are doing it already being gatekeeping sure i mean i know blizzard okay i want to go back because like is that is a problem i do think there has been gatekeeping sure i mean i know blizzard has been in the news for it this is the point where i say that there is gatekeeping and there is sexism 
I say it. People pretend like I didn't say it. But as plain as day, I said it. It's frat boy Colson. There you go. Even when Blizzard hired Jen O'Neill as co-leader of the company, she soon stepped down from the role because she realized that she was there as a token gesture for solving the current lawsuits. You can also throw Riot and Ubisoft in there too. I'm not here to argue that racism and sexism doesn't exist and that it doesn't need to be rooted out where it's found. But there is something that the gatekeeping narrative doesn't account for. See this game? This is Bright Memory Infinite. It's a first-person shooter with awesome action combat set in China. It only runs for two hours, but what's remarkable about it is that it is made by a solo male developer. You don't know this game? Okay, have you heard of Minecraft? Okay, I'm not going into the problems with the creator of Minecraft. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about in this instance. I'm not going into the problems. That's that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> that that is a uh, case of uh, good intentions, extremely bad communication with the uh, audience. Story, Turbo Overkill, Roller Coaster Tycoon, Choo Choo Trolls, Mechs vs Kaiju. The one thing that all these games have in common is that they are created by solo male developers. There's no gatekeeping in solo development. I mean, it would be pretty difficult to create a sexist or racist environment in a company where you are the CEO and the only employee. So then where are the games made by female solo developers? Well, they do exist, but they are few and far between. The Ranch of Rivershine is one. I found two others, but one was was for mobile only and the other was still in development. Point is that when our general population is left to their own devices, the people that really want to make video games and have the drive to make them successful are males. Again, I don't want to throw shade at the few female solo developers here. Can women do it? Absolutely. But most of them don't seem to want to do it enough to make a dent in the comparison. That might be true. I think that there are definitely exceptions, um, but that might be true, especially when it comes to like building a game from scratch. I was not expecting that. Usually people push back on me so hard for this point. So thank you. I, re I really appreciate that. It takes a lot of time. It takes so much work. Yes, she gets it. And it takes so incredibly much dedication. Uh, the modern community has a lot of female devs that do amazing work. Yeah, yeah. And I have played like indie games that were made by women. They exist, yes. And I missed, like, I didn't make a comprehensive list because, as I said, I took it, it took me an hour to find that one. You can find more of them. However, you can also find, for every one I find, I can find another 10 made by guys. It's like, it doesn't matter how much you increase the number, <laughs> the ratio stays the same. The more um, ones made by, by women that I find, the more I find ones that are made by men. So people will say, say things like, oh, look on itch. There's so many there. Yeah, but they're not really successful, are they, at the moment? And then if I compare them to the number of, of males doing the same thing, it stays the same. It's, it's kind of a moot point. Um, obviously. But... It is true that uh, most indie games are made by men, though I would say like a big part of those are uh, not good people. We got indie dev drama left and right. <laughs> but oh, to say that most of them are good people is you don't know them. I th I think that's um m like just using the word most there is a bit. Unfair. Like, I think it's always better to be charitable where, where you don't know something. Um, I think she's talking about her experiences because she reports on that kind of thing. But I don't... I, I, I'm going to take a stab in the dark here. And I think that Virus doesn't know most indie developers. Um, and if they're good people or not. I can think of it at the moment as Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. Uh, that's that's not the point right now. <laughs> yes, like Yandere Dev. I wasn't going to name names, but... So that's I one. think a contributing factor for this is that w women are more likely to have, like, a social life, hobbies, outside of everything else. While... I think it's easier f Yes, like my sister. Exactly. For men to get inside their own heads and like I yes be a loner don't have a girlfriend isolate themselves and in an environment like that you can dedicate yourself to making an entire game 
And I'm, I'm not saying this is true for everyone. Absolutely. Obviously. I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but it is less likely for women to isolate themselves to that point, I guess. If that makes sense? I don't know. Um, yeah, for, for a lot of people, it, it's literally just the drive and dedication, but... Describing literally me? Yeah. Yeah. There, there are definitely a, a part of... Bro, I have painted 2,000 points of Drakari. <laughs> I, like, and there are women that do that too, like, it, like, it's, I'm not saying it's an exclusive thing, but it's very easy for me to get lost in a creative process or, or to play a video game. Like, I can go all day without eating, playing a video game or um, working on something like, like Warhammer, um, and, like, my wife actually has to tell me to eat, otherwise I'm... I'll forget. That, um, that definitely comes from the isolation that women don't experience as much as men do. Now, see, that is something I disagree with. Um, they're, they're Agree. We're called introverts. Thank you very much. I don't go out a lot. But my main focus is on content creation, art, live 2D rigging. Um, I, my dedication lies elsewhere. It's not that women can't uh, survive in loneliness. It is, it's more that women tend to have sources that prevent them from getting in that space. They have boyfriends. Please say it. And that is sexism. It, it is. Um, that, that is a benefit of inherently being a woman in most cases. I don't make full games. Oh, is she saying it the other way around? Like it's sexism that that guys don't have um, those social outlets. I don't. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about either of those things. Um, well, okay, I do. I'm a bit sensitive about people throwing around the word sexism because it's such a it's such a it's so casual. It's like how um, I'll give you an example. It's a little bit like how. My wife's Chinese, right? Chinese people don't say I love you because it's too rich. It's too strong of a word. Claiming that something is sexist is, it's, it's, a, it's a strong word. That's why I don't, I don't use it, especially, um, I don't use it lightly. Um, so like, Anytime something is an inconvenience to me, I don't claim sexism for it. Or, um, like, is any inconvenience a discrimination against me because of, because of my sex or because of my skin color or because of, um, some other thing? I don't, like... I think people are, can easily frame themselves in that situation where they can claim it. It's very easy to claim victimhood in that sense. I think the only reason guys might seem to be better with isolation is because they're just more lonely usually. I don't know what she's saying though. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I might need to actually go back and listen to it. Just zoned out. Um, so I don't really get lonely. I'm just chilling. Guy, yeah, okay, so like, you guys know what I'm talking about though, right? Like, you come home from work and you sit on the couch and you think about nothing for 10 minutes. Literally nothing is going through your brain. And then someone comes up and is like, hey, what are you thinking about? And you're like, huh? Nothing. And you look like the biggest dweeb. But like, it's true. You were thinking about nothing. <laughs> it just is that. Yeah, 100%. Yes, totally. Empty head, brain off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm playing gacha games, it's lizard brain. Like, I'm not even thinking half the time with how often I do that. Yeah, yeah. Especially the part where you forget to breathe for a while. <laughs> nice. And that is sexism. It, it is. Um, that, that is a benefit of inherently being a woman in most cases. No, I don't think it's sexism. I don't think so. She's, she's actually in support of, of guys in this instance. 
I don't think it's um it's something about disliking or hating men that they're lonely. Often guys just choose it. Um, I don't make full games because I don't want to make work that doesn't meet my standards. Yeah, and that is okay too. It, it, it is definitely hard to get into uh, game development. And especially when you're a perfectionist. You can't be a game developer and be a perfectionist. At some point... And actually, this is a, a, a general life skill for anything. You need to be able to be someone that can draw a deadline and be like... Good enough is like like you can draw to a point where it's like this is good enough and then release it and then like maybe there's things about it that you didn't like, but at least you got it out and people are, are using it and it's it's generating income and, and stuff like that. And then the next one you can do better. You learn from the mistakes of the first one. Uh, perfectionism is one of those things that is like people use it like a virtue, but it's not useful in a team environment. It's actually kind of um, destructive. Yeah. Be happy once the number of female devs is 50% or greater in their favor because they believe that finally video games will heal. They will finally reflect the quote unquote right ideals. It will finally be your turn, right? I'm not so sure about that. You might recall this is just a detour. We're here to talk about why games tend to cater more to- And here we circle back around to the fact that the person who is in charge of designing the Nikkei's is a woman. <laughs> I looked this up. Um, it's actually a husband and wife. So uh, uh, maybe she has more knowledge. Maybe she has uh, uh, like some other information that I don't have. But I do believe, like, if I if I look it up on Wikipedia, um, it's uh, a husband and wife that are the artists. Which is fine, like... Even if it's true that it it is a woman designing them, what does that have to do with... Are we saying now that women can't design for men and men can't design for women? I don't know. Even if you have more female devs, it doesn't mean there's going to be less sexualization. Because Shh. women like it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I say that the women that already like it can fit in more easily. I like I'll uh, I'll I would say that lovely um couple designing hot babes power couple right there. I think we should refrain from ever making generalized statements about gen no because that makes conversation impossible. Like that's why statistics exist <laughs> is to make generalizations. And generalizations are what we use to make our informed decisions um, for the, the better of all of society, is we take, a, we take surveys of entire populations to find out what people want, and then we make decisions on those. Voting is a generalization. Democracy is a generalization. So, yeah. When she says that having more women in the industry won't stop sexualization, she... Is for the, the wrong reasons, I feel. It's less that women like it too, and more that they're marketing to men. I mean, I, I think those particular women might like it. Absolutely. And like I don't know how much of it is the majority, like how much how many of them care and how many of them don't care. But look at my comment section. There are people, men and women, but predominantly women that are very passionate about the um about taking away sexualization there are i mean feminist frequency the, there was a whole movement behind it you can't just deny that it exists gender because everyone's different so i don't think it matters if there's more like women making video games if women like sexualization there's one thing we all have in common, we can survive long periods of time without socializing. That is true. Um, my form of socializing, for example, even though I am very much an introvert and would like to be alone, uh, my form is, for example, streaming, having a discussion with you guys, which is one of the reasons why I appreciate having a rather slow chat 
So I can have a two-way conversation with you guys about things that I'm interested in, for example. As a two-viewer Andy on Twitch, that's the excuse I use too. <laughs> I'm not calling her out, but if I was going to make an excuse for why, I was like, yeah, I love it when I only have two viewers. Um, it's because I can keep up with the chat. I hate it when people are like, when I'm when I'm really doing well and the chat's just blowing up. Yeah, that's the reason. This? It's us, yeah. We got a shout out? I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> My brain shut down. I'm sorry. But I think it's all about your circle of like socialization. Because I don't want to fall into a bubble. And I Why not? Bubbles are comfortable. Um, I know what she means though. I am kind of in a bubble. You're absolutely in a bubble. Everyone is in a bubble. Uh, like, you don't have... You can try and do... Um, you can try and reach out of your bubble, but, like, ultimately, I think you are somewhat... I mean, even the country you live in is a bubble. ...of like-minded people, but I always try to expand out of it so I don't, like, fall into a single mindset. I'm, I always try to see different perspectives. I think the problem with a lot of people who are isolated is that they fall into the wrong social circle of people who are equally isolated and this is how incels come to be easier to socialize i can agree with that um i'm not like people call me an incel but i'm not an incel um by the definition of it and like if you ask me what the thread is on reddit for like i i know that incels are supposed to live on on reddit so i know that much um, but I'm just assuming it's r slash incels. I don't actually know where to go because I've never been there. Guys, without somebody directly in your face for some people, yes. And that is true for me. Um, I have severe social anxiety. I cannot function. <laughs> when Literally every streamer. <laughs> um, and that's not, not necessarily true, but... It's very common among streamers. A lot of streamers get into streaming because they are it's their way of, of coping with, with things like this. And I'm directly in front of someone. So for me, talking through a screen, talking to chat with you guys, and I've gotten better on voice calls as well. But for me, this is so much easier. I can actually express myself without like the crippling anxiety holding me back. Yeah, and I think like if I were to make a guess, it's like I'm not a I'm not a psychologist, but like it's because you're in control of the interaction. So, for instance, if I don't like any of you guys, I can just kick you out. If you were in my house, though, it'd be a little more awkward, wouldn't it? Like, I'd have to make some bullshit excuse of why I have to leave, why why you need to get out of the house now. Or, or it would be a physical altercation or something like that. Like, I can't say, like, yeah, so anyways, stream ended, and then you leave. Um, I think it... it um, for me, it's like, it's very convenient because I'm in control. So, are streamers all narcissists? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Please don't kick us out. I won't kick you out. The only insults I actually know are frequent flyers on X. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Social anxiety. Please don't kick us out. We're comfy here. So anyways, now it's... My outro and get out of my house. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you did that. Like you played music and you just like um held up an iPad with like your your end stream picture on it. It's like you don't say anything. <laughs> you just like shove it in their face. Like get the message. Uh, seeing many sides to a subject is a great way to approach forming opinions. Exactly. And even though I do realize that in most cases I'm kind of in a bubble because the kind of viewers I attract are people who are mostly like-minded. And that is just how content creation works. Uh, you guys will have similar opinions to mine, and that's why you watch me. 100%. People attra are attracted to content that affirms their bias, not to get their minds changed. People hate having their minds changed. But I do make an active effort to see different opinions.
there, there are opinions that I don't need to see because I know I don't agree with them. <laughs> I know that in my opinion, there, there are opinions from some people that are just extremely disrespectful. Um, so th there are things that I vehemently disagree with and I don't even want to see their opinion because it just pisses me off. But I, I do try to see different perspectives. Certainly have a few contentious opinions too, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I think, I think we all have that. Um, th there's a balance between keeping an open mind and having your convictions, I think. And I, I have like I, I have points where I'm like, okay, I can be open-minded about this. I can listen to everyone else's opinions. And then there are things that I am sturdy in my convictions in. The content bias thing is weird too, because the entire reason I enjoyed your videos so much is because while I did agree, it seemed rational and calm enough and maybe draw a bridge between both sides of the argument. Yeah, I think I, I, I struck lucky. Um, in that, um, I didn't hype it up and I tried to, I obviously have a bias, like, you know, like, you know it, like, um, but I do try to at least acknowledge the other arguments. I think it's in the comments as well. I read all of almost all of the comments and I reply to to most of them. Well, not most of them. Um, I've tried to. I, I pick the reason the more reasonable ones, the people that I think I can reason with that aren't um, p trying to pick a fight, and aren't too long. Like I can't. There's five thousand of you. I cannot read um, six paragraphs. You replied to mine? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Like, I actually don't know which one was your comment. And if you guys ever disagree with me, please do let me know. Um, because, you know, conversation is good. I think having a open conversation about things we disagree on is a good thing. As long as it stays respectful, of course. It's good. We had a, a, a work policy where if you had a disagreement, you had to hold hands and agree on what you were disagreeing on. Um, but I don't think anyone's ever followed that policy. To have disagreements and discussion, yep, at the right times, yes. Um, th yeah, there, there, there are things that I do not tolerate, and you cannot tell me, oh, this is my opinion, you should listen to it. I won't listen to it. If you are racist, if you're homophobic, if you're transphobic, I will not listen to you. <laughs> that, that is one thing, like sexist as well, um, th that is one thing I will not listen to. But there are a lot of things we can have an open discussion about. ...male tastes when it comes to sexualization. So yeah, more men making games is definitely a part of it, but, and this is an important but, men are simply easier to please. I mean, it's literally as easy as removing some of the armor or showing more skin. <gasps> Tia, Tia, I click on her to get that animation every time I log in. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that is Tia. Uh, <laughs> she's great. I love Tia. <laughs> Um, also, I, I don't think is that men are easier to please. I'm pretty sure women are, are just as easy to please in that regard. I think she's going to get derailed here. Um, the context in which I was saying that is in marketing. So I'm not talking... Like, people often... There might have been a better way for me to say it, but people often get distracted by the idea that I'm talking about um, them personally as a, as a woman. Like, yes, there are women out there that are like, this works for as as well. She's one of them. Um, but I'm talking about, about marketing, how people spend money. The fact that we can, uh, the Nikkei example is perfect. 60% of the money comes from Japan. Out of that 60%, how many of them are women? Almost none of them. They're not paying for the game. Do you, so like, I'm not talking about how you feel about it. Uh, I'm talking about what you spend your money on. It's a very important distinction. We're almost at the halfway mark. We've, there's another video after this. Guards. A lot of women just won't admit to it. As for why a lot of women will not admit to that, uh, that is a societal issue that we could get into as well. Due to society being the way society is, a lot of the times when women show any preference and desire, we're called 
right? That's that's how it is. Um, and maybe it's gotten less in recent times. I'm not sure, but especially during the time that I grew up in, women weren't really allowed to express themselves in that way. Okay, she's talking about her own personal experience. I'm not going to hold that against her. Um, that's her her experience. The only edge men have is being shirtless in that regard. Yeah. I think... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it comes back to... I think Ash was saying it before. Like, um... Woman's purity is is more valued than it is for men's. I do agree with that. So, I, I think for women, it's self-repression in that case. Don't bet, doesn't discriminate, we're all prey to embrace. Exactly, exactly. But yeah, why men tend to think women are harder to please is literally just self-repression on women's parts due to society's bias, um, the need for women to be pure. You know? I don't think so. Um, and the reason why I don't think so is because that's not how they spend their money. So like you, people say th- say a lot of things, but it doesn't matter what you say if you aren't using your wallet. How you spend your money says a lot more. How, how you spend your money and what you throw out in your trash say a lot more about you than the words that come out of your mouth. You know, so that's that's why men might think women are harder to please, but we're not. This is good. This is great. We like this. I agree that she likes it. A hundred percent. Like, I can tell that she really loves it. Going back to Bright Memory Infinite, look how easy it is to get money from us. If this didn't work, it wouldn't be here. Not convinced? What was the biggest marketing point for Resident Evil Village? I'll give you two hints. This is a horror game. Lady Dimitrescu is barely in the game. Also, I thought that people were tripping when they found her really attractive, but, you know, then she picked me up and strung me up, and it, it was like my world changed. I was so confused on whether I should run away or... None of us are immune to the dummy mommies. This was a turning point in my life, actually. I was very confused. Old civil and en- uh, basically actions speak louder than words. Yes. Old civil engineer teacher said that too. You can tell how people act by the way they drive and what they want by how they spend. Yeah, absolutely. This, this is a universal fact. We are not immune to the dummy mommies. So yeah, sex sells, but it's way easier to sell sex to males. Literally edit some art assets, change some poses, get a voice actor to make a suggestive line or two, and it will pay dividends. Sometimes this can backfire. Okay, I'm sorry. This is not exclusive. I didn't say it was exclusive. It is not just female characters they do this to. Have you seen Devil May Cry? (laughs) Me, as someone who appreciates all sexes and genders, uh, had a massive Devil May Cry 3 poster on my bedroom wall when I was a teenager. <laughs> Wait, let's see if I can if I can pull that one up because I, I need you to understand why I'm bringing this up. So this was the poster I, I had on my bedroom wall when I was a teenager. Like I said, as someone who is down bad for all genders and sexes. <laughs> I think they did a really... great job marketing this. No, that's that's the point where we disagree. We were up into agreement is um up until that point. Do we know how much money women actually spent on that? That's 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 my argument. It's not about how people feel about it, it's how they spend their money. They did a fantastic job marketing this to me. To you, yes. So it's not just women they do this to. (laughs) It's men too. (laughs) Because we are thirsty for this. And yeah, it's not necessary, but it's free money if the shoe fits or if you can make it fit. Comparatively, how do you attract females to a product using sex? Like this is a question. Have a good one. Do you add genitals and give them physics so they move around under the clothes of male characters? Do you take characters' shirts off? Do you make them wear turtleneck sweaters? If it was for my wife, I'd dress the character like they're from a K-drama and I'd make them do chores around the house without being asked. But I'd leave one dirty plate on the table and then when the girl goes to pick it up, he quickly grabs her hand and pulls her in and piano music starts to swell. He smiles and looks into her eyes for exactly 3.5 seconds before saying, I'll take Take care of it. Spend more money online, please. I'm glad I made her laugh. I'm glad I made someone laugh. Effective. He's not wrong. I'm as not much wrong. as I appreciate the sexualization, that is not wrong either. But isn't that the same 
the other way around? Yes, but it's not what we spend most of our money on. Don't men appreciate women for doing the chores around the house? Well, no, they don't. N no, hold on a minute. They, they don't. They, they just figure that it's normal. They th hold on a minute. They think all the the dirty laundry, the dirty dishes. They think it magically cleans itself. Um, um she's been in a long term relationship. I feel, <laughs> but we'll get back to that. Okay, my my point is invalid. I suppose I do wash dishes and cooking. I love. Yes, I really do appreciate it when my wife does um cleaning and stuff like that. I don't. I I think that's a um. I don't think it's fair to put words in, in guys' mouths about that. Why am I doing this? But yeah. Yeah. It's okay to want both, is my point. It's okay to want over-sexualized stuff. And it's okay to want romance. It's th That is not exclusive to women either. Do you know how many men, even if they don't admit it, do you know how many men watch romance anime? Because... They want to watch romance anime. Because they want to see that. Because... Yeah, so the argument isn't about whether they watch it or not. It's how much money they spend on it. That's um, where she's getting sidetracked. Because it makes them feel something. This is not a gender exclusive thing. I mean, if I... I never said it was gender exclusive. Go home and everything is clean. I'll appreciate whoever did that. Me lives alone. Yeah, yeah. Um, if anything here ever got cleaned without me cleaning it, I would appreciate that as well. I think everyone would appreciate some help every now and then. Yeah, this would be interesting to my wife, but what about my neighbor? What about my female work colleagues? How many women would this work for? And how long do these interactions need to go for? How much money would I have to spend to put this in a video game that has nothing to do with romantic dramas? For example, Dead or Alive is a fighting game, two people beating each other up, but you can make it sexual for males very easily. What is the cost of doing the same for females and how much will it eat into the core design and game pacing? This is such a misconception that women only want romantic scenarios. This is such a misconception. Even- Oh, is that what the sound is? I thought she was hissing like a dragon. <laughs> but yeah, she's probably sipping the coffee. <laughs> if I didn't like women, which is hard to imagine, honestly, um, again, do not understand being straight, but even if the focus was only on male characters, just, just take their shirts off, like, you're fine, <laughs> you know? Women are just as thirsty as men. We just won't admit it, due to the points I mentioned before. It's far easier to use sex to sell to males and try to strike a balance where it doesn't hurt. I mean, there's a chance that if I make it hypersexual, I can get even more money, even if I get less sales, thanks to DLC and whale culture. I think that at the end of the day, women's tastes are far more, let's say, complex and individually specific. I mean, they are totally specific, but I think that they are more specific than it is for the average male. I think you'd be wrong about that. Sir, I think, I think you'd be wrong about that. People's tastes are complex and individually specific. Yeah, it, it does depend uh, on the person, I suppose. Um, for me personally, I am really not that complex, but I, I, I... I think everyone is both shallow and deep. Like it, um, but I do think that guys are, again, it's about where they spend their money. Um, I touch on that with the OnlyFans thing. It's it's how they spend their money. It's not about um, their deeper feelings. I guess for other people it might be. Wait, now I need to understand. Wait, is is there a metric for this? Can I see how many women play uh, Nikkei compared to men? <laughs> Everyone I, is I but shallow and deep. For that. <laughs> I would I would bet that it's about a fifty fifty on Nikkei, but I it's not can't be a hundred percent sure on that if I don't have the metric for it. Seven to three. This sounds like a lot of opinion, but here's where I'm coming from. In 2013, a study was carried out where they showed four wristwatch advertisements to both women and men. These advertisements had various levels of sexual content and prices attached to the wristwatches. To summarize, women found the ads with sexualization distasteful, but were slightly more accepting if the price of the watch was higher. Men's reactions were more accepting of sexual content, duh, and the price of the watch had no bearing on their reaction. I'm going to quote this part here as it relates to what we're talking about. To quote, in order to appeal to women, marketers using sexual images in their ads should therefore display sex in the 
broader context of committed relationship rather than promoting recreational sex, according to authors of the study. They link the findings back to the sexual economic psychology theory, which infers men see sex as an end in itself while women link sex to a relationship commitment. The ad could, for example, position the product itself as a signal of commitment, such as a romantic gift from the man to a woman, although there was no improvement in attitude if the gift was offered by a woman to a man, or show the idea of intimacy or a relationship prior to any sexual image being shown, end quote. Men in my chat, I know there's a lot of you. Would you appreciate it if a woman gave you a gift? She got it completely the wrong way around. We're, we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about this. Would you appreciate it? But yes, of course, all the guys in her chat are going to say that they appreciate getting a gift. Everyone get, appreciates getting gifts. Yes, yes. Of course, certainly. I'd appreciate it if a woman gave me a gift. Okay, okay, yeah, that's, that's, I, I just wanted to make sure here uh, that we were on the same page. We'll be happy? Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, so, these kind of generalizations. Before she goes on, um, what the study was saying wasn't that the men didn't like getting gifts. What the study was saying is that the woman disapproved of the d sexual content if the woman gave the man a gift. So in other words, and we touch on this in, in part two, um, in video part two, the gift giving only matters if the woman is receiving something. And again, this isn't about her, like this is not about individual tastes. This isn't how about how I feel about it and how it's not about how virus feels about it. It is about how people spend money in relation to sexualization. People take it as this very personal thing because it is a personal thing for them. But I'm not talking about it for you. I'm talking about how our population spends money. And there is only one way to do that with generalizations made from data. That's it. Make it seem like men don't appreciate women for anything other than no, that's not what that means. Hey, baby metal, how are you going? From everyone's reactions here in chat, that is not true. So I think these kind of generalizations should just be invalid, honestly. <laughs> I, I think this is invalid. Um, she just completely misunderstood it. And it's just like the generalization that all women associate sex with a committed relationship. I didn't say that. That is not true. I mean... If we weren't being shamed for it, we'd be more open about the fact, you know, that we're fine with that. I think some men... Oh, no, no, no. I think women should be allowed to speak for themselves on, on that. Like, it's fine if Iris says that for herself, but I don't think that she can talk for everyone without a study. I think that's, um, that's, that's a bit much. Men are jerks, but not all. Some women are jerks, too. <laughs> some humans are jerks. I think society associates that with uh, women are happy to receive gifts, but men don't care. And that is just not true. I, I think... She's so offended about the giving thing. She's got it completely the wrong way around. We should stop generalizing and putting people in boxes like that. It's fine just to be the human being you are, you know? I, mean, I, I, just feel I agree with this. 100%. I feel like a lot of things in this video are so generalized. No, they're not general. They're, I mean, yes, but it's like, it's not about you. It's about money. It's about how people spend money. And it's based on stats that are super generalized. Stats are, that's the only way stats can be. And we don't know the... In fact, the more data you have, the more generalized it is, the more accurate it is. So... I don't know, it's, she's making an emotional appeal, and I get it, like, I, I understand how she feels, but the emotional appeal doesn't have any weight um, in how anything in our society is done. Validity of any of this, but from my experience, like me talking to you guys, me having a overwhelming 97% uh, male viewer base, what, from what I can see, a lot of these generalizations just are not true. And no offense, but like, I wouldn't go off what my chat says. <laughs> like, 
you said that you have a bubble and you attract a certain crowd, and they're more likely to agree with you because they like you. Um, I think you. I think she admits this later on and before earlier as well. So like, it's not really a good point. I think in a lot of cases, what women find off-putting about sexualization of women in games is insecurity. There is their own insecurity about it. Because they see that and they think, men like this, I am not this. So I don't like this because it makes me feel insecure. That, that's what I think the main issue with that is. Because it's not that women sure. don't like sexualization. It's that we don't like how it makes us feel because of our own perceived um, like conceptions of the world. I, I think that's what it is. I could be wrong about this. I could be totally sure. just talking bullshit right now. But I, I think that's what it is. Definitely have body image issues. That is true. I think most of us do. Um, and that that is definitely not just a woman-only thing. Uh, men have body image issues as well. Men have body issue images. Uh, well, men have body image issues, yes. But I don't think that stems from games or anime. I'm pretty sure that stems from social media. In N no, it's not. It doesn't stem from social media. It's a... Uh, it's... It would exist if, even if we um, were in the ages of where we built statues of people. Um, people are generally just, they cover what their neighbor has. Like, I know I'm using a biblical term, but it's true. Like, it doesn't require social media to happen. Uh, I think that um, social media is a tool that is that, that can amplify body image issues, but people have body image issues aside from social media like they're they, they exist outside of social media i feel like the personal feelings and anecdotes on her accounts are pretty far out of place either way she's not necessarily part of the general group as a straight woman but speaks as its representative yeah i mean um i accept her her point as a as a, a pansexual um woman like one of the things i don't do is i don't talk about um lgd lg T, B, Q, I don't know how many there are. I don't talk about those because it's 7%. Like, if you put them all together, it's 7% of the US, and it's about 3% of Australia. So, and it's not something that I know a lot about. So I would rather someone um, in those niche groups talks about it for, for, the, for their group. Um... I don't feel like, like, people try to pin on me that, oh, he didn't mention those things. Like, he just ignores that they exist. It's like, I know that they exist, but it's a 45-minute video. I'm not going, to, I, I say at the beginning of the video, I don't have the time to go into every nuance. That's a nuance. That's your job. Like, if you want to, to do that video, you can make it. Uh, you have my permission. Go for it. And, um, like, that's what Virus has done, and I appreciate that. I like that. I'd say that it's social media back then, the social media were those statues. Yeah, but they're not the, um... What I mean is that the body image issue is in here, right? Like, it's, it's pre-existing. It's, um, it's envy. Sorry, I should say specifically, it's not that she should be excluded from being allowed to make the point as a pansexual. I think I should say it more like this. She's very different from most women as the topic demographic. Yeah, and she actually agrees with a lot of what I said. Like, uh, she's very much on our side, I, I would say. Like, if you, if you put it all in bullet points, like, a lot of the bullet points match up. We're not in... We're, it's not this this huge disagreement. Um, what in Tarnations is pansexual? Yeah, it's people that really like Peter Pan. Oh, I don't think that she's uneducated and unintelligent. Um, but also, like, if, if she was, um, I think people are allowed to have their say. But, yeah. Large parts. And even before social media, like magazines, for example. We tend to look up to unattainable standards but the unattainable standards affect us more when it is not based in obvious fiction i've not met one girl yet who looked at these games and thought this makes me feel bad about my body not saying 
it does not happen, but I do not think it happens that often, gaming media specific. I I agree. I don't think it's as many people. Um, but I think that there are people outside of the space that say it a lot. So, like, what I mean is they attach these, um, their sociology classes that they learn in university onto video games. They don't play video games, but they apply them to video games. So you're, they're not in your circle. Maybe. Like I said, I could be totally talking out my ass. Um, but from what I've seen... I just had an image of her talking out of her ass and now I can't get it out. It's so weird. In the recent drama with um, Azure Lane, which I have covered, um, that did seem to be the case <laughs> with with a lot of um, the negative tweets about the massive bonkers. It definitely did seem to be a lot of women just feeling bad about themselves when looking at the bonkers. Now, I said that most businesses don't want to dabble in trying to use sexualization to sell video games to females, but I never said it doesn't exist. Dante from Devil May Cry. <laughs> Literally me pulling up this exact image. <laughs> I love that this happened. So if you weren't here before, she actually, she's like, look, women like guys in video games. See my Dante poster from when I was a teenager? Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> I did not know this was coming, guys. <laughs> I have not seen this video before. <laughs> Attempt to sexualize a male character in a way that is more appealing to females. Also, there is a whole video game genre. Otome or but I would, I would posit that it's, um... Like, do you have the stats to say that that woman buy bought the game because of it, or was it? And even so, like, what's the ratio? Like, was it more men bought the game, and then you get a little bit extra? Like, you get a little, a few more women that are that lean that way, that like it, that bought the game because of it. Um, how much of it was just like a little extra pocket money because of the convenience? And how, or, or how much of it is, is it the main driver? Um, if you get what I'm saying, like, how much did it matter? That's, that's my question. Or made in games are video games that usually take the format of a visual novel where you are trying to romance one or more male characters. These mostly play out in the same way most romances play out in written form. I think a lot of people will not strictly call these video games, but hey, that's for you to decide on an individual level. I'm so disappointed that she missed out that I called her Lucette Poo. <laughs> Anyways, please play Maiden Game on stream. I, you know, recording it was difficult because I didn't enjoy, I didn't enjoy it at all. Um, but I'll do it. Yeah, sure. While the male characters in these games are not usually sexualized, they do exist for the sole purpose of romance for women. This is as close as we get to men as rewards. He is right. The uh, Dante sexualization definitely appealed to me when I was a teenager. Um, the whole Obey Me series, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is definitely catered towards women. Also the whole uh, Otome games genre, absolutely catered to women. Um, although, this is a side tension, not necessarily relating to this, but uh, there is this anime that's currently airing and it's like, uh, I'm in love with the villainess or something like that, which is an Otome game anime, but it's very gay. <laughs> Okay. And I love the representation. Personally, love the representation there. I I did something like that on the weekend. I went to a BB Rexa concert and um I didn't know what the act before BB Rexa was, but it was two drag DJs. And um Yeah. I mean like Starships went off. Like I lost my voice singing that, but I was also a bit like uncomfortable um with some of the dance moves i had a good time though <laughs> we don't need the men we're just going for the one woman we cannot romance <laughs> yeah also that, that is another thing uh that we're uh, completely generalizing in this video apparently um when the when this guy talks about men and women he's not taking into account that a lot of men and women are gay or bisexual. <laughs> it's not a lot of them, though. Like, at a statistical level. I, like, I can acknowledge here that they exist. Like, it's not, um... And, like, I, I think their feelings matter. Absolutely. I want them to make a video about it, though. Uh, it's not my, um... 
it's not my forte. It's not my wheelhouse. I don't feel comfortable um, talking about it on their behalf. I'm, as I said, I, co I I covered this at the beginning of the video. I said we don't have the time for the, the nuance of everything. Like we're we're skipping over that apparently. Um, he's specifically talking about straight men and women. I mean, honestly, being bisexual or pansexual. Also, I'll I'll put it this way. Um, I have faith that those people can use the information in the way that is best suited to them. Like, I don't think, uh, like, you know what I got? I got a lot of comments from asexual people saying, well, what are asexual people supposed to do? Actually, that's not fair. Some of them said that. Some of them said, well, this is really interesting and eye-opening to me. But like, some of them were like, what are asexual people supposed to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Use the information as best you can and make your own decisions. You're a, you're a grown human being, I hope, if you're watching this video. Um, maybe you're not, but you need to think for yourself. Uh, like, I think it's, it's kind of like this weird thing, like, you can't... You're not owed. A, a, an explanation if you're part of of this minority like you can um i don't i don't feel like i should have to talk about it let me put it this way i don't like chocolate so in that way i am a part of a minority every birthday i have someone is going to give me chocolate and that's fine i love that they thought of me of giving me chocolate I can't use the chocolate. I can't do anything with the chocolate. But I can still appreciate that they they did they thought of me. And I'm not going to get upset about it. I'm not going to ask about what about the white chocolate. You need to look, be able to learn how to navigate things if you're on on, on a fringe. Uh, you you can't expect everything to wrap around your your way of thinking and your life style. I would genuinely love to see a take on this stuff from a... Yeah, yeah. I, w I would watch that video. I would love to see an LGBT, LGBT standpoint. Um, I don't say the word a lot, the acronym. Okay, I only just joined maybe five minutes ago, but from what I've seen, does seem like POV I've heard from Americans. Um, I think she's she might be from... Um, I think she might be from Europe somewhere, um, like Britain, and I think English might be her second language. So she might be from somewhere else before then. I don't know. Cool is great. It opens up so many options. <laughs> there, there are so many kinds of fan service that you can enjoy. Also, um, when we talk about fan service for straight women, another thing that comes to mind is solo leveling. The amount of fan service of the main protagonist is insane and i'm here for it <laughs> but yeah people bring up a lot of anime when talking about the discussion but i'm talking about video games so like um people will also bring up jujutsu kaisen i think the strongest argument you can make is is um genshin impact but there aren't very good stats on how people spend their money for that yeah, um, this video is entirely skipping over that little fact that people can be gay or bisexual. Here to say that RPG games that allow you to make your own character and allow you to create relationships and romances tend to be the best middle ground. A good recent example of this may be Baldur's Gate 3, but there are many others. The key ingredient is that the more relationship building there is, the more likely it is to appeal to females in a sexual manner. Anyways, we've established that more males are in the game development industry than females, and I think I've established my point that it's easier to target men's wallets with sexualization. I think this is- I say wallets. This is enough to explain why they're- Again? I'm pretty sure the player base on Nikkei is 50-50. I cannot say that with certainty, but there is only a few people I know who play Nikkei and half of them are women. <laughs> so in, in my own bubble, it's a 50-50. <laughs> 
but we haven't yet talked about concern number two. The concern that this sexualization nurtures men toward misogyny and incentivizes men to hold women to an unreasonable standard as sexual objects. At this point, we need to take a step back because there is a difference between sexualization and sexual objectification, and we should probably talk about women as rewards. An often quoted example of a female video game character that is sexualized but not objectified is Bayonetta. Even though Bayonetta is full of innuendo, sass, and, well, female nudity, she isn't considered as an objectified character. For starters, the designer Marie Shimazaki is a female. Actually, kind of a stupid point now that I think about it. Moving on, the argument is that Bayonetta's sexuality as a character is intrinsic to her confident personality and explained to a satisfactory level by the lore of the game. For example, Bayonetta's outfit is actually her hair, and all scenes where she is naked, she is using her hair to summon a demon, and her hair is literally the mass of the demon. Further arguments are that her sexual displays aren't for the benefit of any male characters in the game, and that her sexuality is self-serving, powerful, and somewhat mysterious. Like yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. I mean, <laughs> definitely a sexualized character, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and definitely created to stare at. I, the, he is right, there is a difference between sexualization and objectification. Again, it comes back to drawing the line between fiction and reality. Because even though we've all been extremely down bad through this entire video, I don't think any of you think of women as just sexual objects because you see it in video games. I think we can all distinguish between that. I think Nikkei might be the worst example to use for sexual objectification because I don't know how it is with you, but when I play Nikkei, I care about the characters. I care about their personalities. For example, is Crow attractive? Yes. Do I like her? No. <laughs> is she ever going to be in my party? Hell no. <laughs> so when it comes to Nikkei, the character writing and storytelling is so, so good. I agree with her, but also like there's a there's a game that is being played where you're you're saying that this one has enough justification to be not objectification but this one doesn't or this one does and this one doesn't who decides that because i think if it's something like objectification and and you you need to it needs a unanimous thing who is the arbiter of it and then the more you dig into it it's just how people feel about it personally so what are we doing here there's nothing objective about it it's completely subjective about who's being objectified um, but she is right, like the Nikkei characters are pretty well explained, but it works well in my video because people see Nikkei as sexually objectified characters. Like they don't play the game, they don't actually know that they it has a story. That it is hard to objectify them, especially in Nikkei, because like as crazy sexualized as the characters are, they have like distinguished personalities and I can see them as like their personalities as well as like the um sexualization that's meant for them you see like that's what i'm i mean like it's it's really hard like it, it don't you feel like this burden that you have to like justify it why does it need to be justified so what would be the line between objectifying and sexual sexuality the thing is, is that when I say it in the video, I'm saying it as not my, it's not my point of view. It's actually the point of view of the people that would be in opposition to me. So I, it's not my point of view. See, because even DK has some good character story. Yes. So the line is, can you see someone as a person? Can, can you distinguish between your attraction to them as like physical attraction and mental attraction because she's trying so hard if you can distinguish between those two things it is not objectification if you only see them as the sexual characters that they are portrayed to be that goes towards objectification i'll take that a step further and say objectification of characters doesn't make people see other people as objects yeah. Yes. And that is, again, because there is a big difference between fiction and reality. Yes. And there are people who blur that line, but... Uh... See, like, we agree. We actually agree. 
but I think that she felt that she needed to do the the sexualization objectification dance. It is it's funny because like people will say like oh no one cares about this stuff um sexual like sexualized characters are fine but we still do the song and dance like we're going through um like like it like it's like someone is going to chop our hands off if we make a game where it's not justified who is policing this L like she is doing the dance herself uh, you know those people are you they again of course being people who try to dismiss the game like it being harmful yes yes i mean when i say they i, I mean people that are on the opposite end of the argument usually not mentally in a good place each character feels very unique and substantial the characters in nikkei aren't hollow and just form exactly exactly and this this is especially good to explain with nikkei as an example that's because you like nikkei I like Nikkei too. Just because of how good um, Nikkei is with their characters. Blurring that line is an indicator of sociopathic or psych... I gotcha. Psychopathic tendencies. Yeah, I think if you cannot see the line between fiction and reality anymore, that is a red flashing sign that you need to seek help for that. That is such an obvious sign because that never leads to good conclusions. 100%. I feel like whether it's objectification or not is subjective totally depends on who's playing it. For yes! Yes! For all you know, some dude is skipping all the cutscenes. There are some times when I skip the cutscenes and sometimes I don't. I never skip the cutscenes in, um, in Dorothy's story and I've never skipped the cutscenes in Red Hood's story. Fair. I guess. I guess fair. But skip... But like the 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 um the story about the cat girl, I didn't care about that one, so I skipped them. Skipping cutscenes in Nikkei is such a waste because like part of why Nikkei is so amazing is the story. It's such a waste. All of them are female, so we can see Rappi sort of has a military uniform and some guns, so you can surmise she's a soldier. But the stockings and the skirt that reveals her peach every time she turns around have no context to the story of Nikkei or Rappi's personality. In fact, her attire is totally at odds with her straight-laced personality and affinity for order. This would be a case where a video game character would be considered sexually objectified. She is presented the way she is, not because of the story, setting, her personality, or character, but because her sexuality is a reward for the player. She is an I mean, I, I cannot argue with that. It was absolutely not necessary to do that to her, but we appreciate it. <laughs> not necessary, but very appreciated. And also, the thing about Rappi is I, I do like her personality a lot. And I, I think that is the main thing that stops me from saying, okay, uh, Nikkei is just here to objectify the characters. Why should it matter? Like... Yeah, that's that's like why should it matter? Because there is so much care and effort. I appreciate that there's care and effort. It's why I keep playing the game. But like, I know that there will also be people that don't care about the effort. Put into every single one of these characters. They have their own entire backstories. They have reasons why they say the things they say, why they are the way they are. And especially with um, the anniversary event, you can see it in Snow White. Especially in Snow White right now, you can see the change in her, why she is the way she is. And I think... Why do they find it so evil? Um, they find it evil because they see it as an extension of reality. So they see it as men make these games because they view women in a lowly as a lowly position. That's why. Um, like, uh, the, the people making the video game, making these sexualized, um, characters are asserting their ideas of what a woman should be into this media and they're propagating it. A bit of fan service is okay. I, <laughs> I, th I think it's okay. Uh, definitely wasn't necessary, but yeah, we love it. The fan service isn't the cake, but rather the icing. The story, characters, music, style, and gameplay are the cake. Es exactly, exactly. You don't need to justify it. There is so much more to Nikkei than 
the over-sexualized that, you know, may maybe I'll collect these sexualized characters. And then the moment you get to the end of the intro, you're crying. <laughs> and it yes. It just hits you out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> I thought it was a waifu game, goddammit. <laughs> just seems too subjective to just call it straight objectification. Yeah. Um... I think in a lot of cases, especially in Ike's case, it's a little bit more complex than that. What I understand from when we see the way Nikkei's look, um, from what I understand of the story, a lot of it is based on the person's, like, the, the real girl's brain inside those bodies, on her preference. That could be somewhat realistic with the way they look, because women can have a preference for certain body types, you know? So I don't think it's necessarily, like, completely unnecessary. Yeah, but, like, come on. Like, come on. <laughs> you can hear yourself going through the, the, the bullshit of, like, the justification of it. Like, it's fine. Like, it is. It is what it is. It's a great story, and there are great assets in it. And that's fine. Like, it doesn't have to match up. To do that to them. And especially because this is set in a, like, futuristic dystopia. Especially because this isn't necessarily, like, their own bodies. I, I think this could still be, like, somewhat of a realistic scenario in that case. I don't know if I'm making sense. Am I making sense? Makes sense? Okay, good. <laughs> I wasn't sure. If someone took my brain and made me a new body, at the very least, make exactly what I want. Yes. Yes, and that, that is kind of what happened with the Nikkei's. Also, um, from the backstory, they have tried to transplant men's brains, but it just didn't work for some reason. So they're all women for that reason. It, it, conveniently, I suppose. Yes, it's, very it, convenient. It, it stretches the believability a little bit, to be fair. But you can still see where it's coming from. You can still see why they're over-sexualized when a lot of women have a preference. What point is it over-sexualized? Like, doesn't over mean too much? And who decides it? For over-sexualization. We guys are too dumb to be transferred. <laughs> I, I have no clue why it didn't work on men. <laughs> I have no clue. But it's very convenient that it only works on women. And as for the lore behind this, and this is so much of a side tangent, I'm sorry. Okay. But as for the lore behind that, um, it only works on women who are confident and have a strong will to live. Who have a strong purpose in their brain. This is true. Um, because what happens to women who are like depressed, who don't really have much of a purpose, who don't really have the will to live... Uh, they are usually turned into the mass-produced Nikkeis. They're they're not part of like the unique Nikkeis. It is sad. It's really sad. Yeah, the the backstory of Nikkei is so dark. Actually, <laughs> actually, the backstory of Nikkei is so dark. <laughs> but I, I I love this game for it. As you earn or buy currency in Nikkei. That's right. Yeah, you took nine S from me. Okay, you then use that currency to have the chance to own one of these sexy characters, therefore woman as rewards. The idea is that video games teach males through gameplay to see women as objects because there are women as objects in video games and there are women as rewards in video games. These males will then go out and emulate this objectification and reward expectancy on real women. You know, misogyny. In 2022, a meta-analysis was conducted on 18 studies. This meta-analysis was titled, Does Sexualization in Video Games Cause Harm in Players? A Meta-Analytic Examination. Meta-analysis basically basically compiles and compares multiple studies in search for correlating data to draw a wider insight on an issue. Here is the abstract of the study, to quote, Whether video games with sexualized content do or do not relate to mental health and body image problems in players and or sexualization and hostility towards women is an issue of broad public interest. However, evidence from empirical studies has generally been mixed. To examine this issue, we explored the degree to which sexualization in games was related to both well-being, body dissatisfaction, and sexism, misogyny among players in two separate meta-analyses. Results revealed that sexualization in games was neither related to well-being, body dissatisfaction, or sexism, misogyny. Better design studies and those that showed less evidence for researcher expectancy effects tended to find less evidence for effects. As appears commonly in other realms of media effects, the evidence is weak that sexualized games influence player attitudes and behavior. And yes, and this is exactly the point that I've been making the entire time. Most people, by far most people, can see the difference between fiction and reality. And 
it does not affect their day-to-day life or their mentality towards reality. Yeah, I, I actually think that virus here is like, she she got what I was saying right at the beginning. Like, I think that's purely because we are like, we have a similar opinion um, on the matter. Like, it just is. So she like it, she didn't have to like struggle to grapple with that part. Um, she did struggle with some parts of it for sure, but like this part she totally gets. Uh, I'm really happy about that. 